So the boys, we all went to Nebraska this weekend, but we sat down with Trevor Alberts and the head coach, Scott Frost, and it was a blast. Who would have thought that I would have had the best NFL career out of all three of us? Uh, <laughs> like stepping into this role, were you surprised about some things that had to be fixed? I want them to stop focusing on the problem, and I want them to start focusing on what they need to do in the game. At the end of the day, football is a game played with your heart. Here we fucking go. 6-0, going in to raise the country. No, I mean this with all due respect. Fuck Big Red. It's hard when you're playing Michigan and the fucking referees. What do you mean? Are you kidding? When they called it back, touchdown, called it back, touchdown. Are I... you talking about the reviews? When yes. you guys obviously didn't and score? Then... You're that rattled right now because your fan base didn't have your back the way my fan base has my back. Listen. I wake up to a text from him Saturday morning before his game. And he's like, hey, you need to get that bus in Knoxville next weekend. All right, we are rolling. Another episode of Bussin' with the Boys underway. Um, as you can see, we have some wings sitting here. Are, they, are the wings in the shot? No. Let me grab them. Sorry, I know, I know Nashville's a tough spot to grab wings. And people are always looking for a good spot. We just had 60 of these bad boys. Where both cameras, doesn't matter. Bones clean. The ones that aren't clean, it was probably JP's doing. Uh, but strikeout, strikeout wings in Nashville, over in East Nashville, or not East Nashville, but more like in the Berry Hill area. Um, what do we get? Sweet heat, lemon pepper. The lemon pepper's fire. And uh, Cajun ranch. Yeah, Cajun, Cajun ranch. ranch sauce. I don't know, but str hey, strikeout, strikeout has the wings. If you're in Nashville and you need a spot to go get wings, strikeout wings is where it's at. Uh, diving into the episode. Tough weekend, tough weekend um, for Nebraska. I'm 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 leaning on Nebraska thoughts right now. Raiders lost, Nebraska lost, Washington football team lost. Titans won, thank God. I guess the Saints beat Washington. I mean, I was on the Saints. Like I helped turn that program around. Program yeah. like it's a <laughs> uh But yeah, thank God the boys took care of business in Jacksonville. Could you imagine if we would have lost to Jacksonville after Urban Meyer? Like, you know, dog, the memes on Urban Meyer are all time right now. The Jacksonville Jaguars are down bad. And uh, I'm glad it stayed that way. They didn't want to touch Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, they just make way for the king. Hey, you really don't want to play for Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that one might not be in the cards for the boy. <laughs> Uh, but before we get into it, you guys know the drill. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever is sponsoring this podcast, the Chevy Silverado. Uh, those boys are strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. Football season is in full swing, and it's time to up your tailgating game. Fall means football and tailgating, boys. Uh, it's time to tailgate around the strongest, the most fun Silverado too. Like we talk about strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking, but the, the Silverado is fun. I'm going to tell you why it's fun. Number one, multi-flex tailgates. So since it's tailgating season, we got to talk about the tailgate. They have a multi-flex tailgate with six convenient configurations. Um, it'll give you a step up. It'll give you a step up on your tailgate game. There's a primary tailgate. You guys know what that one is. Opens up with the push of a button on the key fob or the inside of your truck. No more, you know, no more open it up manually. You can now just push a button. The inner gate folds into a large step for easily getting in and out of the bed. Here's the big one. There's an easy access configuration where the inner gate folds down, allowing you to reach farther into the bed. No more belly flop and no more jumping into the bed. No more having your boys pull your ankles to pull you back out of the tailgate. They now have an easy access configuration where it does it for you and helps you get in there deeper. No pause. Um, it can also become a desk or a surface for your tailgating meal. I don't know if you're seeing that uh, that commercial going around that the Chevy Silverado is doing during football season. The one where the old man he's he's telling his boy, "Yo, check it out. I can work out. I can I can. The tailgate is now a desk. I can send emails. Like, look at me. I'm sending a fake email right now. And the kid comes out. Dad, what are you doing? I'm doing emails. I'm working. He's like, you're working on the Chevy. And he's the kid didn't get the joke. He sent him inside because it's like you know, hey, get the joke. But um. <laughs> But you can now, 
set your iPad up, say you're watching the game, set up a monitor, whatever the case may be, while you're grilling the dogs, uh, while you're flipping burgers, grilling steaks, making baked beans. You can now do that on the tailgate of your own truck. The Chevy Silverado is modern and advanced with a ton of grit, and uh, they're partnering getting absolutely everything done that you want done on your truck. The Silverado is as strong and dependable as the people who drive them, you. Um, go to a local Chevy dealership near you, and uh, let them know the boy sent you. Chevy's changing lives. We're hearing that. Um, uh, what is it called? I'm drawing a blank. Not the tailgate, but the uh, hatch. Hitch. Hitch. The trailer hitch. Yeah. They're they're giving out free tail uh, trailer hitches, which purchase of a Chevy Silverado. And remember, tell them, hey, this is what the boy said. I don't know. I don't know why you're telling me no now, but here's what Will Compton said. We get a free trailer hitch. I'm hearing there's some buy one get one deals out there going on. I don't know where you're gonna have to find them, but if you go to the right one, I hear they're throwing in a, a buy one Silverado get one free. Don't know where that is, and you can't uh, quote me on that. That's not in the ad read, but that's just what I have heard out there. Um, but yeah. Episode brought to you by Chevy. You know, we can stop talking about Chevy instead of turning it into an entire episode. All right, diving into this episode. Dude, packed episode. We got, we got, we're going to start off with Scott Frost and Trev Alberts. We went out to Nebraska this weekend. You guys all, you were, were aware if you follow us on social media. But we sat down with Trev Alberts, the athletic director, and the head coach, Scott Frost, the day before the Michigan game. And it was a blast. Those dudes had fun. The hardest part was... Uh, we towed the bus out there and we're sitting out, not a cloud in the sky and it's upper eighties. It's like 86 degrees out there. So we were back to our day one roots. We're sweating in there. Trev Alberts, he comes on first guest we've had on fully suited. You know, he's sweating his off in there. You should probably bleep that out. Bleep out the bleep out when I say. Yeah. So bleep Just, out when hey, I, say, I, I got you. You don't have to repeat it. Yeah. Bleep out the part where I say working his off. Just bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, we got, we got the bus out there. I was working hard to get that thing set up before the guests came on. Could you repeat that one more time? Did you say I was working hard? All right. The boys, JP and Garrett, were work, worked extremely hard in getting that bus taken care of when it got to Lincoln. We, we landed in Omaha at probably what, 1130? Yeah, 1130. Drive to Lincoln. We get there at 1230. We got to stop by Jimmy John's. Uh, I was big on telling the boys, hey, this is where your old man used to go when he was back in college. Really? You know, I had never heard about it. I was very excited to, to go to Jimmy John's. You never heard of Jimmy John's before no. that weekend? Yeah. I'm glad to have opened your eyes. It was a banger, right? It's only in Nebraska, right? Jimmy John's? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> um, So we get to the site at probably what? One o'clock? One o'clock. And so we have 45 minutes to turn the bus around. The bus is there. Shit all over the bus. It wasn't put together yet. I'm hanging up neon signs. The boys are doing all the back end work. Go ahead, JP. I know you want to tell your story. I love. I just love how Will keeps saying, we got there. We had to set the bus up. It was hot. We were grinding. This is, this is what Will was doing when we showed up. We got to the bus. We unlocked the bus. Garrett and I step on, start going to work. Will pokes his head in. Remember, we just came from Jimmy John's. We did not eat at Jimmy John's. We took it with us. He pokes his head in. You see a sandwich in his hand. And he goes, all right, y'all, I'm going to eat real quick. <laughs> and then sticks his head back out. Next time we see him, everything's all set up. And he he just kind of slightly adjusts the neon signs. And he's like, hey, man, we did it. <laughs> hey, go on now. I'll put them neon signs up. He put one up. All right, it was one. But I couldn't help that the bolts, the things are too wide. So figure it out. I didn't want to break nothing. And y'all, y'all mess with it more than I do. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess up with y'all had. Y'all were building it. I didn't want to start coming in, putting it together, and then take full credit. I wanted you guys to kind of do your thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We did our thing. Yeah. Our thanks to you. Uh <laughs> but we die, we talk about some spooktober stuff, some spooky stuff that we're watching out there. Um Taylor crashes the pod for the love of God with his Michigan fight song music, fight song music. We talk about the Nebraska game. Of course, we talk about a lot of stuff. What brought the Scott Frost and Trev Albert segment to life is number one, the university of Nebraska. They reached out to me last Tuesday. We got it all put together last Wednesday. We met about it. Um, we're going back and forth on how we even make this work. Cause I thought it would be impossible to get the bus out there. Um, especially get out there and like shoot and do pods. But we got to shout out the Nebraska social team. Nick 
running the head of social uh, out there. I hope I'm not butchering that, that he's the head of the social department. But he got with the athletic department, asked Trev Alberts, um, the AD. He was all in. They got Scott on with us as well. Um, we had him for a good probably, what was it, 35 minutes? Yeah, 35 minutes. And then from there, it was figuring out how we could get everything paid for. Um, Nebraska helped a lot, but first and foremost, Raider Fan Radio, Swaggy Jeff and Murph, thank you guys so much for getting the bus towed out there. They hooked it up with the tow truck driver. Um, threw a little bit in to sponsor the bus getting out there. Uh, Sid Dillon, Tim Peeper, the owner of Sid Dillon, I called him right away. They were like, hey, is your guys a Chevy sponsorship? Is that national? Um, or is it, can we kind of figure out any dealership? And I was like, from right there, I was like, I'm going to call Tim and get Sid Dillon on board because I used to detail cars for that man every summer, minimum wage in the heat. I called Tim up. I'm like, Hey Tim, we're bringing the bus out. We need sponsorship money. And I, um, I worked my ass off for you in the hot summer heat. It's time to pay it back. So I came to collect. He laughed. He was all in about it. They helped get the bus out here. So shout out Sid Dillon, uh, the dealership out there. Go to Sid Dillon. If you're, if you're in Lincoln and you want to buy a truck, go to Tim Peeper, Sid Dillon Auto, and tell him that Will sent you. And you're, that's one of those buy one, get one free truck deals. Um, and then also Open Doors. Blake Lawrence at Open Doors. I called up Blake. Blake was all in at getting on getting the bus out there. Uh, the segment, we have the Open Doors helmet sitting on there. But a big shout out to them for you know, all these people for helping us get the bus out because we would not have been out there had people not been working overtime within 24 hours to make these decisions. Uh, but that is why we got out there. So without going any longer, here is the Trev Alberts and Scott Frost segment of the episode. We talk a day before the game. We have a lot of fun with them. It was hot as hell. And then after that, we're going to roll into uh, the updated current pod that is of this week on Monday October 11th is when I am talking right now. So, Scott Frost, Trev Alberts, Go Big Red, Black Shirt Till I Die. The boys are the best 3-4 and four team in the country right now. Could be, should be, uh, 7-0. Yeah, yeah, right. It sounds good? Yeah, yours is good. Will. All right, boys. How are we doing? We're doing great. I'm doing good now that I'm here. <laughs> Dude, we got two Husker legends. Like, were you, you did you you guys didn't play together? You guys missed each other by like a year, right? A couple um, years. Just missed each other. Yeah. Because yeah. you were at Stanford getting homesick. Yeah, 93, 94. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you smart. were did you win a natty? I was failing in the NFL at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what were you, you were drafted third overall? No, five. Five yeah. overall? Was it just injuries? Yeah. Um, it was several things, uh, you know, but injuries primarily. I hadn't really ever been injured until I got to the NFL and and uh Hadn't really had to work through an injury. You know? Yeah. So just sort of my between my elbow and both shoulders, and I had had enough. Was it like a mental thing since you hadn't been injured very much, and then you finally? You know, I, I don't know. I I, uh, I tried so hard. The mistake I made was um, I got I blew my elbow out my first game, rookie year um, against the Seahawks, and uh, I was so badly trying to show them that I was wanting to get back and you know tough guy and I played in the last five games that year yeah which was really dumb because I, I wasn't healthy and I was protecting my elbow and I that made my left shoulder go and then I kept coming back too fast yeah and uh and then it was the wrong scheme I was a three four guy and I'd never really played um you know we were going to run a three four that's why they drafted me and then when I got to camp they said uh, they'd made a decision to change and they were going to a four three and they asked me what position I wanted to play so I found myself playing defensive end at 240 pounds, head up a tackle at 330, and a tight end at 280. It didn't work out real well yeah. for me, Will. Meanwhile, Scott's over here winning natties with yeah. uh, Nebraska. Yeah. What's and it, I was watching and cheering. What's it like being like being from the same generation, winning national titles, Buckets Award winner, all this stuff, and now you guys are like running Nebraska? Well, Scott's running Nebraska. I'm, <laughs> I'm just the athletic director. <laughs> No, it, it's great at, um, having somebody on board that cares about this place as much as as everybody around the state and as much as I do. And I think we got a, we got a chance to get this uh, improved and keep getting better. And I think we got a chance to take it where everybody wants it to be. Would it be fair to say you would have, as your NFL career and everything ended, that you would have preferred to be a black shirt over a quarterback? Because <laughs> you got drafted in the third round. Everybody listening, he got drafted in the third round as a safety. 
and you're playing special teams like you're you're the you know how you're the is. quarterback oh you know yeah bro I, I didn't play a lot of defense I, they just said sit here on the bench until it's time for kickoff or kick return and then run out there and knock your head against somebody and i made a living at it for a while did you like it or would you have rather played would you have rather played quarterback going into the nfl uh i knew i wasn't going to be a quarterback in the nfl those guys can throw um I was good enough to get the ball there in college when we threw 12 times a game, but yeah, uh, I was a better athlete than I was quarterback. Would you say you were Taysom Hill before Taysom Hill was Taysom Hill? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't <laughs> put myself in that category. <laughs> All right, well, we're sitting here. We got Buckus Award winner. We got national champion. Draft in the first round, draft in the third round. Who would have thought that I would have had the best NFL career out of all three of us? Uh, <laughs> but those are facts. And, and, and look where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Back, just trying to interview you guys, just trying to pop some jokes. Um, you had a great career, Will. So far, I'm still like, I'm still trying to get tape out there. I'm still trying to get in the league. Um, no, but it's, dude. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, being a special teams guy too, like transition to the other sp- to the other side of it, like just playing playing this long I would have just never guessed that you can make so much of your career out of special teams and just being a guy who's like I guess always ready to play or like always ready to go and being prepared because I know I'm sure you try to beat guys over the head with it like no matter what part of the depth chart you're in because every every kid aspires to go to the next level like being a guy who can be like a Swiss army knife or staying prepared or like when your number's called that's when you have to showcase if you've been prepared the whole time in practice and trying to carry it over and being patient and waiting behind guys. But I would have never thought I would have made a career out of it. Um, is that something like you feel like you, you preach to the kids a lot, knowing that they want to go to the league? We talk about it all the time. and you know, If you're the star wide receiver, you don't, probably don't play on special teams. But if you're the second, third, fourth receiver to make a roster, you better be covering kicks and being gunner on punt and holding up gunner. And if our guys want to play at the next level, chances are they're going to be doing those things. And being able to put it on tape is important. So... We've had good buy-in, but if you want to play in the league, uh, you better you better be on teams. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you just coming into this AD role, you've been somebody who is obviously very well respected. Anybody who ta- I was just joking with you out there, like when I was in class, I'm like I wasn't joking either. Like when I was a freshman, we had these you know older professor older professors, no disrespect, but they're like they're talking about Trev Alberts. I'm like searching, I'm searching you and just, you realize how good of a player you were because the person before me was like, was Barrett Rude, who is on your Mm. guys' staff. And like, you've been in this world of Nebraska, you grew up here. What has it been like stepping into this role and like just taking it head on? Because you've had to hit the ground running since you've gotten here. Well, it's just such a, I consider it such a privilege and a blessing, you know, I mean, um, I love this place. Uh, you know, that's kind of the unique thing that Scott and I share. I mean, we not often do you have an athletic director and a head coach, both alums, who both just love this place so deeply. But um, it's been everything I thought it was and could be. Um, certainly, there's some areas that surprised me, and not in a great way. Um, <laughs> and uh, but that's okay. Um, this is a place full of wonderful people, full of wonderful potential, a state that cares deeply, uh, deeply invested. And uh, I think, you know, um, just continuing working on bringing people together, creating that unity of purpose, having something bigger than anything, you know, individually we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, Because football really matters in the state of Nebraska, and that's what's awesome. And, you know, you want to be at a place where, look, there's some burdens to that, you know. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, if people care, that's awesome. And I don't know of any other place uh, that people care as much as they do for Nebraska football. And I just... I still walk in my office every now and again. I, I cannot believe that I get to serve as the athletic director at the University of Nebraska. I think back to those days like you did when you know, I'm walking around this campus and the thought of, I mean, Bob Devaney was the athletic director Yeah. when I was here. Did you guys stay at Selick? Did you guys stay at these dorms right here? I was Able 903. That's what you were saying. You're like, it might have been Able. Yeah, I was an Able. It seemed like the longest walk in the world every day over to the stadium. <laughs> But no, this this place is uh, this place is incredible, and uh, you know there's so many people before Scott and I that invested so much to make this place what it is, and um, you know our job is to be good stewards of the roles we have, and um, you know work as hard as we possibly can, and and we're doing that. Uh, we're not perfect, uh, but I I'm really proud of of where we are. Do you feel like it's Coming from that uh, generation of the 90s that everyone talks about all the time, 
stepping into the role as a, a head coach now being mm-hmm. what is it your fourth fifth year fourth, fourth year? year have you been surprised by just the way the fan base is when times are tough uh there's good and bad fans everywhere i think nebraska has more good fans than almost anywhere in the country um you know, we, we've had a lot of work to do, and it's been great having the support of the fans. You know, Trev said it, the, the best people in the country live in the Midwest and live in Nebraska. Mm. Hey, say that again. Say that again. Say that again. The, Go best, ahead. the best people in the country live in the Midwest and live in Nebraska. And I'm Nebraskan, so I'm biased, but that's the way I feel. And you know, there's going to be good and bad everywhere, but I really appreciate the, the support that we get. Cross country mortgage. Let me start that over. I should leave that part in there. Because we all fail. We fall, all fall off the horse sometimes. Almost mess that up too. <laughs> Cross Country Mortgage is much like us at Bussin and Barstool, a people first group of people. They are dedicated to the fundamentals of mortgage lending, which results in a fast, convenient, and less stressful home financing or refinancing experience. Rates are unbelievably low. Ro- lo- <clears throat> it's all right. Hey, this happens. Hey, you got it, man. Yeah. Oh, bleep that. Bleep that S word out. Yep. Rates are unbelievably low. Don't pay the bank more money than you need to. Our friends over at Cross Country Mortgage make it super simple to figure out how much you can save on a monthly basis and over the life of your loan. The numbers can be staggering and you don't know how much you can save unless you actually talk to an expert and figure it out. Uh, Click here, swipe up to learn more about your refinance and connect with your team over at Cross Country Mortgage. If you're a homeowner and haven't refinanced recently, you may be leaving thousands if not tens of thousands. Heck, who knows? could be hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table over the life of the loan that could be working for you in other places like your new man cave makeover, season tickets to the boys out in Lincoln, out in Tennessee, wherever the case may be, or an investment home purchase if you want to become a real estate investor, um, or you just got a boatload of cash you want in your pocket. Rates are at all, all time lows. I mentioned that, and they may never be this low again. Call today, and our friends over at Cross Country Mortgage will give you a free home valuation that is free for you just calling. Um, don't miss the window as rates are expected to creep up. Uh, reach out to them and see what they can do for you. And when you connect with Cross Country Mortgage, tell them that the boys at Barstool sent you. Go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool to learn more about your fu- future home buying experience or refinance your current mortgage. Is there anything else below? That's it. They Keep that going. Nope. See? Hey, my fault. Yeah. Cross Country Mortgage LLC, NMLS 3029, all loans subject to underwriting approval, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Were you um, like stepping into this role? Were you surprised about some things that had to be fixed? I was surprised, kind of how far it had fallen. Um, because, bro, you were at you were a stud at Oregon. Obviously, you went from all defeated to undefeated at UCF, and then you come to Nebraska. And I, I'm the same way. I'm holding up the fire. I'm calling winter frost now. Like I'm ready to just go. I'm like, here we go. We're going undefeated, boys. And then you you've had like lumps in the road along the way. Like, has it taken you more? Like, has it been more surprising to you since you've gotten here? Uh, yeah, there's been more challenges than I even anticipated when I took the job. But, um, you know, you want it to look like it looked. Everybody wants it to look like it looked. But that doesn't just happen overnight. you got to have the right team. you got to have the right players. you got to have the right attitudes. you got to have the right level of strength conditioning. Um, that, there's no doubt in my mind how much progress we've made and how close we're getting to, to being the team that everybody wants us to be. Um, got another great chance tomorrow to prove that, uh, but the the progress has been slow and steady. And um, I, I don't want to talk about the '90s with our players too much because they don't want to hear about. Old they guys. really don't, bro. Like I remember, they do J- want to hear about Will Compton, though. Let's <laughs> be honest. Hey, that yeah, that stuff's funny to me when Mark Meyer tells me like, "Hey, you mind sending shirts out here and stuff?" And I'm just like, "Do these dudes even know that they're getting coached by Barrett Rude?" You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, cause when I'm a guy here, Barrett would come back in the off seasons and he would help me study film and watch film. And I actually learned how to watch film through Barrett and he'd be running the quarters with us when we had Dobson as a strength coach, he'd be conditioning with us and everything else. And I'm when the, when the, uh, when the boys are messing with me about getting a shirt and this and that, I'm like, do they not know like Barrett Rude and Jason Peters and all these guys are just like around them at all times. Even you too. Yeah, But you have a podcast. I know. It seems like it's the coolest thing to do. It is. It's very cool. Um, very trendy. Yeah, very trendy. Scott and I are going to start a podcast. 
What are you guys going to call it? I don't know. I just came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to have air conditioning on our bus. Yeah, Dude, hey, <laughs> hey, I can yeah. feel it. <laughs> we can yeah, we're, we, we're, like we're, we're definitely having sweat. air conditioning. <laughs> oh, I know you're sitting under that suit. By the way, you're the first one to be on the bus in a suit, so I appreciate the professionalism. Well, I, you know, I try to represent the university as well as I can. And uh, Same. Actually, I... <laughs> I do have other responsibilities after this, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, no, it's an honor to be on your bus with you. Yeah, um, Scott. When when it gets hard, do you lean on guys like Osborne? And like when when shit gets like challenging and difficult, like as a head coach, when you're facing like adversity over the over the past few years, like are there people you lean on? Like what's a like a route you go? Like, I'm always intrigued, like, when I have somebody on the bus, like, going to whatever their toughest moments are in whatever industry they're in at that time. So, for you, probably, it's been probably the last few years with Nebraska with the success that you've had coaching everywhere else. Like, what are things that you've had to, like, grab, pull out of the basement or lean on or try something different to be like, you know, what is what's going on right now or uh, what do I need to do or who I need to ask a question to? Well, honestly, when things get tough, I lean on my faith. Um, I've got one judge and people on the internet aren't that one. Um, and that, as long as you keep that perspective, you know, you're always, you're always going to stay level and, um, and we're doing things the right way. We're, we're doing all the right things to try to build the team. Um, so everything that happens is temporary. Um, and as long as we keep on a, a good trajectory and keep doing things the right way, it's going to happen. And, uh, I think this team's real close to that. I do lean on Coach Osborne a lot. He's in a lot of practices. Ron Brown is real close uh, with the program and lean on him a lot. Um, go to those guys to, for support. And th those guys have a ton of uh, coaching experience and wisdom. So it's always good to hear from them. But at the end of the day, you got to lean on what's most important to you. And for me, that's faith. Dude, Ron's been around a long time. Ron, Ron's Coach old, Brown's but he been doesn't look a old. Long time. He looks the same as he did. I was going to say, he, yeah. He looks the exact same, too. Is he still running stairs? He's still on the bike sweating sometimes, but, uh, yeah, he, he doesn't age very, very Not much. Not at all. I mean, he looks like the same guy. we check in our hotels, and he'd, like, tell Amir... Abdullah, he'd just tell those guys, like, no, he's not taking the elevator. He wants to take the stairs. He never wants to take an elevator at a at a hotel because he always just want to, wants to, like, stay in shape, I guess. Maybe that's the key. <laughs> just taking the stairs every day? Yeah. I'm sure you'll look like that when you're 60. God, dude. Hey, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm fighting now. Hey, I'm fighting. Yeah. Hey, we'll take, what are you talking about, JP? Body at 32. Did, you, did you ever have to do the Ram drill? With Coach Brown? No, thankfully. Just line up. It used to be like Ben Cotton, Kyler Reed, or everybody. yeah. I never, I never had to go on those. It's like old school board drill with like tight ends. That's how they start practice. Individual break, stretch, ramp drill, and like the boys used to talk about it in the locker room. Like, dude, it's week nine. I can't do ramp <laughs> Hell drill. yeah, do I remember, remember. Nine by it. Yeah, not that I want to. I was going to ask you a question about our days, but I want to talk about our days. Um, where was I going to go? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about how close you guys are getting. Like, you can feel the energy a little bit more right now. Like me, I'm on record saying the boys are 6-0 and oh if we don't have special teams. You, you know, if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot and we don't have certain penalties, I, like you always talk about shooting yourself in the foot. And I joke around on the podcast saying, hey, boys, if special teams is in a phase, well, the boys are undefeated right now. We just got to fix an area. We got to fix some penalties. And we're rolling. But when you guys are, when you guys are playing with a top five team like Oklahoma, when you guys are playing with a, a top 15 team like Michigan State or top 20 team, um, and you guys are barely you guys are barely losing those games, like what's the message that you give those guys to still encourage that what they're doing is the right thing? Um, that hey, we're this close, like because you know when you when you're losing close games, especially on defense, mm -hmm. um, it's always what could we have done? You break down everything so to such detail that like, man, if I would have just done that, we would have won the game to where you're beating yourself up for playing well on defense, but just kind of complimenting and showing guys and be like, Hey, we're almost there. We're going to do, we're going to take care of business. Like what's you, what's the message been like since having the season and getting it rolling? You know, what's great about this team is uh, we came back from Michigan state and I had a meeting with our unity council and those guys told me they were more confident in the team and who they were after that game than they were when they were zero and zero. Uh, despite a couple heartbreaks. Um, there's been a lot to get better. We need to get bigger. We need to get faster. We need to get stronger. We need to get tougher. Um, a lot of those things have come along. 
um, the the team's playing well enough to play with and, and beat about anybody it plays, and that's great. Um, our locker room needs to hold everybody accountable to do their job. And, and really, despite all those challenges and improvements that needed to be made, I would say the biggest one is um, the belief. You know how when you go into a game, you think, okay, we can win this game, um, or you think we're going to win this game. And, and when you have a mindset that we're going to win this game, then you find a way to make the play to win the game. And that's been the most challenging hurdle to get over. The kids believe they can do it, but there's always been it, just watching them a little bit in the back of their mind of, we don't. We think we can win the game, but when you have that attitude, there's a little voice in the back of your head say, "Oh, what's going to go wrong now?" Yeah. And when you're a champion and you're used to winning, that doesn't even come into your mind. You just think, "How do I how do I make this play and get the get, get the win?" And and we're getting there. Yeah, that was well said. How do you feel like you empower those players that you try and speak to on and trying to like get that I guess personality across? Confidence. Because I see what you mean. Because it's like if you feel like oh, I, I think we can win this game, and the moment it gets harder, goes bad, or you don't capitalize on offense, and then the defense gives up a touchdown, then maybe the sideline. You're that whole. I think I should have been like, oh man, we're, we're probably gonna lose this game compared to like, oh, we're still in this thing. You know what we did last week is it because there's been some things happen to us. I can't even anticipate them happening. It, it's just it's been. You know, how, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> right, right. Right. And w what we did last week is it just trying a new tack with them. I, I think I talked to the team about for three years we've been fixing this and fixing this and fixing this and fixing this. And that's all fine, except then you're focusing on the problems. And I don't want a team focusing on the problems anymore. So I asked them, what, what do you do? What do you do well, when you're playing Madden with somebody and it's 21 nothing? You tell them to get off the sticks. And you hit reset. Right. So I told the guys, let's hit reset. And I asked the O-line how many times have we fall started this year, and they said too many, Coach. I said, uh-uh, zero. It's not a problem. And I, I want them to stop focusing on the problems, and I want them to start focusing on what they need to do to win the game. And they, they came out and played well last week, so we're hitting reset again. Um, we haven't given up any flea flickers. We haven't missed any PATs. It's not a problem, and we're going to get our job done. Yeah, I'm getting a little juiced up by that little speech right there, Searles. What do you think? Well, if you want to suit up, especially on special teams, I'm all for it. <laughs> I, go, no, I, I go nuts on the sideline. I'm losing my mind. Out. I saw you on the one where they they did the, they mispunted it. Yeah. I saw you in the background on TV being like, oh, no, it's this loud, way. As loud as I could, yeah, I know. Out. You and me Brutal, both, bro. <laughs> it's over here. I know. But, hey, last week you take Northwestern out back and just put them down easy. That was a good step in the right direction. That's a that's a team I got a ton of respect for. Uh, they've been as good a team on defense as we there's been in our league for two years. Um, we had trouble scoring on them for two years, um, and everything came together offensively, and the defense played well again. Uh, so you know that's what it's supposed to look like. And but we need those things to happen so the guys have the confidence, expectation that that's what's going to happen, and then they go make it happen. Yeah. Well, you went in the halftime low key. It looked, you looked like you were a little pissed off. I'm thinking, hey. Hey, Scotty, we're beating these boys. We're dragging them. You know, I've had some good conversations with Trav already, <laughs> and he he talked about uh, coaches that when things are going real well, you go in and you're pissed at your team. And yeah. When, when things go bad, you love on your team. And, and there's he's got some wisdom. There's something to be said for that. And I didn't want the boys to let down, so I thought the best way to approach it was get after them a little bit. And they came out and responded in the third quarter. Dude, it fired me up. What kind of, what kind of wisdom is he speaking to? Well, I don't, I don't know that I have a whole lot of wisdom. but Oh, um, come on now. You know, I it, it just always I talk to other coaches, and it doesn't have to be football coaches, but, you know, the times when you win a game, the next week in practice, you can actually have a really tough practice because the guys are really feeling good about themselves. Right. If you're not careful, and I've been part of losing organizations where it seemed like we tried so hard to be winners that we ended up, you know, uh, the negativity engulfed us and, and – you know, we took the opposite approach where you'd lose and then the coaches were just driving down on you. And, and at the point when the game come along, you didn't even feel like playing anymore. It took the love out of the game. I mean, at the end of the day, I was just talking to JoJo about this prior to walking over here. I mean, football is a game played with your heart when you really think about it. I mean, obviously, but if, if, you, um, if you get a group of guys, which is what I am really excited about what Scott and our coaches have, is we got a whole bunch of guys that have great hearts for football. You know what I mean? Like yeah. They're passionate, and you can just see it. And uh, 
Uh, at the end of the day, you need more of those types of players, and Coach and his staff have done a great job of bringing those types of players in. You were that kind of guy. I mean, football, you, you play with your heart. I mean, yeah, there's technique to it, and you have to have athleticism, but at the end of the day, um, what's inside there? What do you want? You know, what, what price are you willing to pay? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I went, worked with some other coaches and, and a, a Hall of Fame hockey coach who uh, it was interesting. I'd go into the locker room and we'd just win five to one against a team we weren't supposed to beat. Mm-hmm. Say it's North Dakota. And as Dean Blaze was his name. And uh, Dean would walk in there and just rip the team. And I was so confused. Like, how in the world is he mad? At, we just won five to one. It's the best game we've ever played. And he'd walk out and wink at me. I don't want him comfortable. <laughs> and then there'd be times when we looked so bad. I mean, we couldn't skate with a puck at our feet. And uh, we'd lose seven to one, and he'd go tell them, boys, we're close. That was some wonderful, and it, it, was, it was just a little psychology to it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and we, yeah, as a player, you, you all, there isn't a single player that wants to make mistakes, that wants to get beat, you know. 100%. And so if you're not careful, especially in a state where it's so important, you know, the magnitude of the um, of, of the – sort of attention and negativity can just overwhelm your program. and uh, Especially kids, too. Especially kids, and especially with what they're – so we're fighting hard on, on the positivity and, and unity and, and all of those things, uh, uh, and, and they're doing a great job. Yeah. No, it fires me up. Um, when I had I had Bo on, and we're like – we're talking shop afterwards and everything else. Did you have one of those machines that bleeped? <laughs> did you have the air conditioner on for oh that? bro yeah it was it was felt much better in here i know i don't, we only got a few more minutes too so i'll, I'll keep it short okay oh, um i love that quote by the way um i just know if we if we dove into it I, we would run out of time because i'd want you on here longer and i know i don't have scott too long uh but i would Bo and i we were golfing and i finally just got to i felt like i could talk to him like i could tell him stuff that like hey like back in the day when i was young dude and you give up a, a running play for like three yards and you're on the sideline being like, that's too much. And then you're thinking in your head, like, I don't want to mess up for this guy. But what you think you become and you're out there playing to, you know, not make mistakes other than like playing to go and attack something and play successfully. Because obviously we all care so much. Him too. Like, that's why everybody kind of coaches with their emotions. But um, just to speak on that, it was like, it's like that thought too is like, they're young kids as well. Like they just got out of high school. Like they think they're so sick. Yeah. And now you got to like de recruit them. Yeah. But at the same time, you need to like have compassion with them and everything else to coach them up. Mm-hmm. Um, you never get into it. 1997, Nebraska, Michigan. Who wins and why is it Nebraska? <laughs> well, you already answered it. I, I played with a lot of Michigan guys over time, run into a lot of them. Brian Greasy was my teammate in Tampa. They think they would have won. We know we would have won. We'll never answer it. Um, it's a shame back then you didn't get to play that game. Uh, but I, I, I've said this, and I'll say this. This is political and democratic. But when back in that era when two teams were undefeated, they deserved to both be national champions. They had an unbelievable season. We had an unbelievable season. Um, I'm glad we split it. I think that was the right thing. Come on now. You think that was the right? You're glad that we're they won We're a day away to? from the game, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's Scott fair. Frost hey, that's announces fair. Michigan stole half the <laughs> See the headline now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got to play. You got to play with Coach Harbaugh, right? I did, yeah. Do we have any was- some, some behind the behind enemy line psychology? Any good stories on him? No, G- Jim's a different cat now. Yeah, uh, but I, I love Jim. He was um, what I loved about Jim uh, during our time. You know, he 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 was a football player. Obviously, he's a quarterback. But sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, Jim never separated himself from the team. Uh, Jim was really tough. You know, he didn't ask other people. To, he was one of the toughest guys on the team, and um, he was a really good football player. He he wasn't the most gifted person. He didn't have the biggest arm. He didn't. Uh, but he 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 was. He was a great teammate who held the rest of us accountable. And quite frankly, we went to the AFC championship game and it was all because of captain comeback. I mean, he had a magical year that year in 95. And, and uh, so a lot of respect for Jim and, and uh, our family spent time together. We lived in the same neighborhood there, right near the Colts complex. And, and uh, so you guys live in the same neighborhood. I can't afford to live in Scott's <laughs> neighborhood. <There we> go. <laughs> I'm in an apartment. Yeah. You in the dorm room? 
I'm not in a dorm. <laughs> I, I I do have a three bedroom hear, apartment. I hear the kids now. They have like pretty much. They have like they're, condos. They're so spoiled now. I mean, back yeah. back in our day, it was two bunk beds and a desk and a phone. Yeah. Now there's no phone, no desk, and living room and bathroom for everybody. And bro, they're in like apartments now. It's like yeah. apartment style. Yeah. Hey, whatever for recruiting, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well. If you had, if it's if not uh, able. Or <laughs> yeah, no doubt. If we had a ring, Scott Frost, Harbaugh's in the ring. Who's your money? Scott around? Frost. I love it. That's what that's what I needed. Say that again. Scott Frost. There we go. In fairness, he's like ten years older than I am. <laughs> hey, so. youth, you got youth on your side, dude. So, so do you. With Harbaugh, yeah, but this is this is you versus Harbaugh. Yeah, but uh, ten years from now, you won't be ready to cover a kick in the NFL. Right now, you could do it tomorrow. True. I mean, time. Time takes its its toll on everybody. Yeah, but hey, time time would take its in this case, time has took its toll on Harbaugh. Did you just you're winning, you're scrapping say the fight? Clearly, time has taken its toll. He just looked at me and said that, didn't he? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm, 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 I, I see where looking, you're going. I there. was looking at you. I was looking at you, like in the situation that I just presented, when it's Harbaugh and Frost in the ring, time took its toll. Father Time caught up to Jim. Yeah, we ain't caught up to Scott yet. Yeah, it ain't exactly. caught up to Jim either. It, uh, That'd be, that'd be fun. I bet, he would, I bet he would enjoy it, too. Yeah. Um, that's about all I got, guys. I know you guys got to roll. I know you got to, you know, kiss some babies and yeah. do your thing. But uh, I appreciate appreciate you guys for coming on. Oh, oh, one last thing. Were you guys, are you guys, let's talk about the uh, chili and cinnamon rolls. Are you guys the cinnamon roll chili crew? I am. We had that uh, about every two weeks at Wood River High School. It's my favorite meal when we'd get a, I'd get a double bowl of chili. And a giant cinnamon roll. Why is that? I, I, when I a, came here and they're like, oh, let's go let's go to the uh, carnival or let's go to this cook-off, a chili cook-off. You're like, okay, sweet. And then you go in there feeding you cinnamon rolls, and it was like my first time doing it out here in Nebraska. I'm like, what is going on out here? I, I, I grew up, and that's just the way it was. I, chili and cinnamon rolls went together. I don't know. It, maybe it's a Nebraska thing, but it, it'll be a thing for me as long as I live. I grew up in Iowa. That was not normal. We had cinnamon rolls and we had chili, but never together. Did you guys get your corn from Nebraska? <laughs> no. Hey, oh, oh, hang on. Let me ask that again. We produced fairly decent corn right there in Iowa. Fairly well, decent, but is yeah. it Nebraska quality corn? Yeah, I, I did. I went over to, you know, Coach Osborne's son has a, a, a best of big red shop, and you can go in and get all this great Husker gear. I recommend you go. And I bought a shirt from my dad, and it's a red shirt. It just says, Iowa has bad corn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw somebody that? on game day. They had yeah. a uh, they had a sign, Iowa has bad corn. Yeah. Also, like, Iowa gets their corn from Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always busting, like, uh, Kittle's balls about because we're always arguing about who's going to win every year, Iowa and Nebraska, which, you know, I need, hey, I need the boys bad this year. I'm, yeah. I've been yeah. down bad, dude. Yeah. Um, but, no, man, I appreciate you guys for coming on. You guys have anything? You guys have anything for me? No, good luck, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, you hearing from any team? Uh, well, by the time this comes out, it'll be Wednesday. Yeah. I think I will be... Really? So I was supposed to go... Last week. My wife, she was getting surgery to get a cyst removed that had, that had been on top of her ovary and we're 15 weeks pregnant. Everything's fine. Everything's safe. But she needed to get this... Uh, uh, surgery everything went smooth but she was going to need she needed like a bedside assistance and everything else and couldn't drive and stuff so i called <laughs> hey in best case scenario you know you could call in a couple weeks and i'll still be ready but i get that it's a business and if you got to move forward then you know you got to do that but we're just going to knock on wood hope this all plays true and it would be this next week if not you can easily man, cut this awesome. from the yeah phone. yeah hey <laughs> hear nothing on monday hey boys let's cut that out cut that out <laughs> Good but luck, yeah, man. Heard, that'd be awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I heard from them, and then a couple others like early in the training camp. But that was that's that's been about it. And then training camp, like you know how it is, like you feel like you've put uh, like a resume together to where every team knows pretty much what they're going to get, like the intangible stuff, and like okay, he's a plug and play guy, he's good depth, everything else. So in my mind, it was like why go and put more wear and tear on a body that's getting older, and when I can just. You know, you train my train yeah. train myself and like try and stay healthy until season comes. But how many years you got? Going on nine, bro. Wow, that's unbelievable. Thirty two wow. years old. That's I'm really catching good. you. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna have about seven thousand dollars a month at fifty five till pension. he dies. Yeah. Pension, yeah, that's nice. Four hundred one k. Hey, you still pension. know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you get? You'll still be living that? on this bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Scotty, how about this weekend? You trying to do a pod this weekend? 
We will have air conditioning. Then. Yeah. Now I'm fired up because I came to the spring game and I was just joking with Scott. I'm like, hey, we get the bus in Nebraska. You're going to get on? Knowing like we'll probably never have the bus in Nebraska because we got to tow it. He's like, yeah, come on. If it came here, look at us now. With the pension, you could buy a new bus. <laughs> you really want that pension. One that actually runs. Well, hopefully, you know, Chevy, Chevy pays us a little more and then we can just buy another one. There you go. Why not buy another one? Yeah, Garrett's always sweating hardcore. Just one for the road? Yeah. Just can stay at home. This looks like American Pickers should want it. <laughs> hey, do, do you think... <laughs> said American Pickers. Hey, do you think... Uh, sorry, I'm like thinking of another one because I'm looking at that Open Doors helmet. Open Doors helped get the bus down here, by the way. Do you feel like you, when the, when the surge came out and NIL, NIL dropped its bomb on the planet, do you feel like it's been easier to approach or has it been more difficult like trying to trying to like get your arms around because i feel like day one when it comes out um everybody's kind of like running everywhere with their heads cut off like let's get the team in like let's talk and talk about hey guys like let's keep the main thing the main thing yada 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 now that it's kind of unfolding do you feel like it's getting easier to maintain because of the help and resources you have here i, I think we have a long way to go when it came out everybody's trying to figure it out and it and it's going to be a consistently changing landscape ever-changing landscape but I think we're just scratching the surface on what it can do for Nebraska athletics and Nebraska football. And it, if um, Nebraska fans are behind this and Nebraska companies are behind this, I think our players are going to stand to do as well as anywhere in the country. And there's a lot of work to get it there, but I don't think we're even barely scratching the surface on what it can do for us and our program. It's got to be nice that Open Doors is a hometown team. Yeah, we got a lot going for us. And, and the biggest thing we have going for us is the fan base and the interest in Nebraska athletics. And yeah. Not just football, volleyball team and basketball teams and baseball team. Um, I think there's a lot of ways that our, our student athletes can capitalize on it. And, and um, we're just getting started. Dude, I dropped a few grand to try and have the boys sell those shirts for me. Yeah, I'd like they these, do. I had these, the boy, were, dude, we're at like 2,000. 2,000 shirts? We're dominating Michigan. Taylor and I, like, Taylor went to Michigan, obviously, and we had, like, this $10,000 bet of who would sell more shirts. And I'm like, bro, I swear to you, I promise, Nebraska's different. He's like, Michigan's different. I'm like, well, Nebraska's different, different. And then we're, like, going back and forth. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just, let's bet and see what happens. And we're just dragging him. It looked like, you know, you guys last week against Northwestern. Yeah, well. And then I started, so then I went to like, Open Doors. That's and then like started, one period of practice worth of pay for him, so I'm sure he'll <laughs> yeah, be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I get on a high hop on uh, Open Doors, and then I just start, I think I paid about, or I tried paying like 50-some players on the roster, like, hey, boys, you guys trying to push the shirt? Got a lot of help, man. Yeah, good. But I appreciate you guys for coming. I know it's hot. I know it's good very to see hot. You, buddy. Yeah, good yeah. to see you. Thanks, good luck buddy. To you. Yeah, man, Hello. good seeing you again. If he wants to comment on it. Hey, can can you can you can you touch that? No, <laughs> I gotta that, go. Have you seen that? No. Oh, you've never seen that? That was my first year in broadcasting, and I showed a lot of uh, real room empathy for the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, Trev, he's hosting Bruce. Who is it? Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith. So my first, my first or second game as an NFL player. And you know this, I was a quarterback. I'd never played on any special teams. And they put me at left wing on punt. And the first punt we run out there uh, in Buffalo, and it, we're about the 45-yard line, and it's defense stay for Buffalo. And my fir basically first play as an NFL guy, I'm lined up, and Bruce Smith is going to rush the punt on me. Oh, my. Hey, stay and inside. I, hey, Scott, stay inside. Oh. <laughs> I got trucked. I got absolutely flat back. And Cor Corwin Brown, who's played at Michigan, was a veteran safety on our team, and he was laughing at me, and I came over to the sideline. He goes, dude, next time just cut him. So later in the game, we went up again, and and, and he, he, was, he was right. If you cut one of those guys, they're not going to rush much anymore. Yeah. They don't have any interest in that. But, man, did I get embarrassed on the first one. Bro, it's hey, you're on an island out there on the left wing. We on both, the have wing. A good, both have a good Bruce Smith story. Yeah. Though. It was, it was just, you know, it was, I was some of my first year or whatever in broadcasting. And, and the truth of the matter is that happened. And uh, I did uh, show a, a real lack of empathy, and I really felt bad about it. It was so bad that... Uh, How would you know what to do in that situation? Well, <laughs> did you so see him? He kind of just like... Uh, there was a media critic at the time uh, named Rudy Martsky who wrote for the USA Today. And he called and he said, Trev, I need to talk to you. And this is live on TNT. Um, and it was, I don't know what our two days before the Super Bowl in Atlanta, 
And uh, he said, hey, you know, I got quite a few people calling saying, you know, you, you, you didn't really try to help him. And the only thing I knew how to say was, oh, Rudy, I totally agree. I'll be honest with you. They walked through a lot of things with me as I didn't go to school for this. <laughs> but one thing they did not say is if the guy falls over, do this. You wouldn't expect that, like, if a, if a woman's going to fall down, you're going to catch him. Yeah. If, a little, if a little baby is about to fall down, you just naturally. Yeah. But that's, that's Bruce Smith. He's 285 pounds. <laughs> but I, and then I panicked, and I said, Bob, back to you. Yeah. And, uh, you even stepped back. You didn't even step toward him. No, I, yeah. You're like, ah. It looked like he was. Yeah, over uh, here. Bob, back so, to you. But the good news was Bruce was fine, and uh, we, his agent called us, and, and uh, everything worked out That was fine, your first but. year? It was my first or second year. I can't remember. It might, it might have been my first year, but it was the first time. So I always just was sitting there at the desk, and you know, the guys, you're just this propped up, and they'd ask you questions. Yeah. You can always respond to questions. Well, this was the first time they took me off the desk. I stood in front of, this is a long time ago. We had plasma TVs then. You know, We're going to move you over here, and you're going to do this interview. I'd never interviewed anybody before. And uh, so here we're standing there, first experience. And uh, the NFL Hall of Famer. That'll right never happen to him unless he passes out. But we'll, well, if we we'll stay on this much, much longer, yeah. <laughs> we're about to fall over. <laughs> oh, hey, this right, is boys. great. Yeah, this is awesome. I know Thank you. Gotta you. Get to your thing. you guys need anything for the game? Are you guys good? Georgia Boot. Shout out the boys at Georgia Boot. I hope you guys, hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. I know I am. Huh? Yes, sir. I love it. <laughs> hey, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment right now. Um, but Georgia Boot, guess what, boys? It's Mocktober over at Georgia Boot, and they have the world's most comfortable mock toe boots on the planet. They're the world's most comfortable boot and the hardest working boot in America. And for over 80 years, Georgia's been making wor- boots that work as hard as you do. Tough enough for your job, cool enough for everything else. Georgia Boot makes super good looking and super comfortable boots. So comfortable, you'll never want to take them off. An example, we were at the Husker game over the weekend. As you'll hear in the episode, I watched most of the third quarter in the training room. I wanted to lay down. I wanted to get off my feet because the dogs were barking a little bit. I was in some regular shoes when I should have been in some Georgia boots because they are super comfortable and they look good and I would have never had to take them off. I could have stood out there on the sideline the whole time. But I wanted to change the atmosphere. I wanted to change the luck a little bit. Fortunately, it turned it around. So credit to me for getting off my feet. But that's not the point. The point is Georgia boot would have saved my feet from a rough post-game experience. Um, I had to do a little bit of recovery after the game. You know, JP, go ahead, JP. I am in the middle of an ad read, but go ahead and tell your little story because it pertains to Georgia Boot and that of which I should have worn. Yeah, if you would have had Georgia Boot, we, we could have got out there. We could have gotten out of there a little bit earlier. But he, I did about, what, 20, 30 minutes of rehab? <laughs> Is <that> rehab? <laughs> Some recovery? Will got a full post-game uh, recovery treatment from the Nebraska staff. Shout out to the Nebraska training staff. No but, free shout outs, Mark. Anyways, Will was with us. He's like, oh, I got to go put my feet in the cold tub. They're killing me. So he's in there. One of his former teammates was giving a tour to some high school, some, his, his high school players, his high school players. And he's walking through the training room, pointing out all of the awesome amenities that the training room has. And he looks over to the cold tub. He's like, <laughs> yeah, we got our guys in here. You know, this dude probably just sprained his ankle or rolled his ankle and he's, you know, soaking them right now. And then he, he does a double take. He's like, Hold no, up. one of the, he said one of the kids was like, hey, "Is that Will Compton?" No, you're the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the kid goes, "Wait a second, isn't that Will Compton?" <laughs> and Will Steven is like, yeah, "What is he doing in there?" Dog, they came in the they came in the doorway, the whole crew, and he goes, "Will, what the hell are you doing in here?" Everybody just starts laughing because I'm in there icing my feet after the game. I'm with two of the Nebraska players there, cold tub, and I just got my calf cast down in there. And my icing dude, them. Nebraska has just come off a heartbreaking loss. And Will is in the ice bath, <laughs> acting like he was out there. So Tough we, we game need, out there, boys. Yeah, we need you, Georgia Boot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Georgia Boot offers the best work boots. Wedges, just get right back into it. Uh, work boots, wedges, and loggers around. Whether you need a scroll down, JP. Waterproof boots, steel toe, soft toe, uh, square toe, met guard, non-puncture, shank, non-slip sole. They've got it all or the new mock toe. Head over to georgiaboot.com. Use code BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N for 20% off of your Georgia boot purchase. Make sure you get that wink in there. I hit him with a wink at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all 
right. The uh, I was just told, thank God for JP, uh, that that was the ad read to end the segment with Scott Frost and Trev Alberts. I hope you guys loved it. Please share it. Uh, we grow as much as you guys do. We're about now, we, we are now about to transition into the current events part of the pod where I talk about the weekend, where all the boys talk about the weekend. We we brief on what happened over the weekend. We talk about some Spooktober stuff. Taylor interrupts the pod and we just go toes and it gets really emotional. It gets a lot of high arguing. I think there were tears in there at one point and then we, we make up pretty hardcore at the end. But um, yeah, so now... You know, now we're going to go into that part of the episode. I kind of butchered that last part, but hey, subscribe to the pod. Leave a comment. I'll tell you one thing I learned over this weekend going to Nebraska, and that's JP has all the deals known to man. My guy every week, he's like, hey, come you going to Smoothie King? It's Friday. There goes uh, my deal of the week, man. That was going to be your deal? <laughs> yeah. We're going to give you a deal of the week segment brought to you by uh, JP. Is it Hovey, Hovey, Javi? Hovey. Will just di- just disrespect you on the. Yeah, I've been here for six. Brought months. to you by JP uh, Javi, deal of the week. What is your deal of the week for the people watching? For the people listening, tell them where they can go. Tell them where they can have a great deal. So Will kind of spoiled it. There, y'all missed out on some great deals this past Monday, Tuesday. Next week, I'll try to give you a little bit more of a heads up. This week, we got five dollar Friday at Smoothie King. <laughs> Any smoothie, thirty two ounce. 46 ounce. You tell them Will sent you, they'll give you their new 55 ounce smoothie. Yeah. No, for sure. uh, you can get protein in it. You can get some vitamins and all everything you need at Smoothie King for $5 on Friday. That's your deal of the day. I love that. I love that deal of the week segment. Simple. Yeah, chains. Simple. JP, he's a young cat, so he's kind of like all of us in college, right? He reminds me of myself in college. Like you're always trying to go and find those Buffalo Wild Wings deals. I won't say them. Yeah, come on. You're always trying to go get those Applebee's deals, all those different ones. We're going to save you them because JP's going to deal you one each and every week. Hot and fresh. You look like you're ready to say something again. Yeah, I mean, you got to find the deals when you're a little bit underpaid. So (laughs) (laughs) that's the main reason I'm into it. I like this segment. Your free internship's going to pay off one day. Keep working hard. Did you see Eddie from Barstool? I did. He, he did a in free Forbes. internship for five years before he started getting paid. That's not a very good business. And he's group, in Forbes now. Good for him. But I don't work like Eddie. What does that mean? Eddie let people take advantage of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else for you. Except for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> So the boys, we all went to Nebraska this weekend. Myself, uh, JP, and Garrett. Hey, is that gonna is that gonna go down as a weekend of the year in 2021? We lost. You know what? It's very disappointing that we lost. But I'm saying, the experience that we had, we've never taken the bus on the road. But it was crazy, man. Getting the bus towed down there on a flatbed. John, by the way. So we had the sideline passes. Right, we were on the sideline for the game and everything. I'm telling John, like, hey, if I get you a ticket, do you want to go to the game? He's like, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. John's our tow tow. Tow, tow truck driver and we get down there and we have an extra sideline pass and wristband and my man john he's just on the sideline with the boys the whole game he's wearing it was he wearing a nebraska shirt nebraska, yeah ne- nebraska t yeah and some electric blue jorts some jorts some high you know those high dad ankle socks those white those white socks that go up to the bottom of your calf With the two stripes at the top no, but they were scrunched. They were all scrunched together. And then he's rocking some old looking new balances. The dude looked incredible. I see him middle of the game because I didn't see him before the game. And so we're running around. JP's hooking him up with the sideline pass. Probably the second quarter, I look over and John's standing there just watching the game. Like, hey, John, what's up, man? He's like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. It's, hey, when we got back last night, uh, he was like, he was like, man, thank you guys so much. I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything in the world. Bro. So shout out to Nebraska for hooking it up. And I will ask you guys this because you guys were Michigan. You guys were pro Michigan. We won. You guys won. (laughs) We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But is Nebraska not different, different? Nebraska is different. Yeah, Nebraska is different, different for sure. Um, You know, growing up in SEC country, we just like kind of think the Big Ten's a... You think every other conference is like below you guys, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. not that they're equal with the SEC, but they're definitely serious about their football in Husker Nation. 
I think them, uh, you know, Nebraska's a dry campus, so that might, you know, keep them a step below. But they let them drink and party at the Union, and I think that brought the energy known as the Big Cobb energy. Big Cobb energy. I think the bus being there, too, is electric, bro. Dude, people were fired up, man. The love for busting with the boys down there is crazy. We go, we I was going to say up there, but, you know, same difference. Up there. Hey, and you say the SEC is a superior conference, right? Like, we have five teams in the top Big Ten right now. Absolutely. Or we have five teams in the Big Ten in the top. We have, we know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five Big Ten we have five, yeah, yeah. Five Big Ten teams in the top ten right now. Yep. You, you can argue that we're the best conference in America at this at this state, at this part of through, the year. Through six weeks, it, it could be an argument, but... When you guys start playing each other, we'll see how by the end of the year what what it looks like. I mean, we have been playing each other. That's what's crazy. And what's your record? <laughs> We're three and four. We're three and four. But <laughs> <laughs> there is a legitimate argument. There is a legitimate argument that we could have been seven and zero oh right now. Yeah. That's facts. The only game I will give is Illinois, the game opener of the year. We did look like shit. We didn't play that well. Granted, special teams kind of lost it for us a little bit. But that's the only game I would give that we would be, if we're playing in this could have fantasy world, we're 7-0, and oh, more probable 6-1. and one. But as far as these teams, that all three of them, Oklahoma, Michigan State, um, and now Michigan, all ranked. Oklahoma's in the top five, right? Where's Michigan State in Michigan now? They're in the top ten. We 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 could have in a couple of those games should have beat all three of those teams. And this weekend against Michigan, we're playing against the refs. You can argue that we're playing against the refs. The bullshit call. Did, did you guys watch the game? Yeah. yeah. Did you guys actually watch the game? Yeah. How does how does that play not get blown dead on the fumble? I know. I, I do think it's a bang bang call. Like it's tough. When y'all was watching like the TV copy, when I was going back and I was kind of like scrubbing back and forth to see how long he actually was stagnant. You're looking at two whole seconds of the game clock, almost three. There's an argument it could have been bowling dead, but it's like, you know, you gotta secure the ball and shit. They made a good play. It was just a fucking bummer because the boys had the momentum. When we came out in the second half, Garrett and I, we stayed in the training room. I'm like, we got to change up the luck a little bit. Let's watch the game from inside. And my feet were hurting, so I need to get off them boys. The dogs are screaming a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we stay in, and the boys come out of the gate, score that first drive, which is what you need. If we get a turnover... And we're just rolling. We're rolling in the third quarter. I think we outscore them, what, 22 to – can you bring up the box yeah, score? I think we outscored them, yeah, 22 to 6 in the third quarter. And then you go where they dim the lights and they do that – uh where they cut the lights off. You got the red rock and you got flames going up. You got ACDC banging. Everyone's holding up fourth quarter. Like we had all of the momentum. Were we getting calls? Yeah, but we were getting calls on like reviewed plays. We weren't getting calls be, like off the benefit of a of a penalty call. We we're getting calls because old boy's knee was down before he handed the ball off. We were getting like, I thought the reviews were good. I yeah, they, the reviews I were good. Right. Yeah, I think the biggest penalty that had a big um, effect on the game was the PI that they called yeah. on JoJo yeah. on JoJo before halftime. Yep, no that was fucking brutal. The guy runs into JoJo. JoJo doesn't even really do anything to the guy. And the guy stops. Mind you, the ball's overthrown. Like, it's not even catchable. And when they called, what did they call it? A delay game on us? On 28 for clapping his hands? Oh, yeah, yeah, but didn't they say that uh, we could? they couldn't do that because of Michigan's cadences had a clap? Everyone's cadence kind of has a yeah. clap. Martinez does this before the ball goes. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're, in, you're in Memorial. You heard how loud it is. The boys are trying to communicate. If you if you're looking at the game, um, I hate that I'm I'm messing up his name because he's a good he's a good fucking linebacker. Twenty eight is it? It starts with an R. I just don't know. I don't want to mispronounce his last name. But um, he's just looking over, trying to get somebody in position because the 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 dude standing next to him can't hear him. So he literally leans over, and the ref is right in front of him. He's looking. He's looking at two eight, and the guy just leans over and claps like, "Hey, hey, you got to be over here." That's all he did. Is he clapped two times? Uh, 
Reimer, Reimer, Reimer. Damn it. I'm sorry, Luke. Reimer. Luke Reimer. But all he did is look over and he claps twice trying to get his attention because, hey, you got to hurry up and line up. He just right in front of the referee claps twice. Hey, you got to go over here. And the ref just throws a flag and walks up there. Like, it's not like he's leaning up on the lineman and clapping. Like, you're looking at him trying to communicate in the loudest stadium in the country, Nebraska fans. And that that play was bullshit. Then there's a few others. I like it was hard to keep up with because we're on the sideline. Then you kind of see stuff after the game of all the calls that were happening. But just stupid penalties, bro. And apparently these were the same rest that were that were part of the Oklahoma game when we were getting atrocious calls there too. They were quick on everything too. That was the quickest like calls I've ever seen. Like he was on the mic making the call immediately after the whistle. Right. Like there was no convening, no thought put. It was just, hey, this is the call and I'm making it. And I think that's why those calls ended up getting reversed is because they were making them way too quick. Yeah. This episode of Bustin' with the Boys is brought to you by Revitalite Black Label. You've heard me talk about Revitalite a lot by now. You know the drill. It's the adult version of a certain drink you find in the baby aisle. They took away the embarrassment we meet at the register by putting their brand in places where you can buy beer, wine, and liquor across the nation to make your weekend shopping even easier, and you can get it on the Barstool store. Um, Revitalite is taking things to the next level and teamed up with us to create the ultimate way to save yourself a rough morning after any weekend. Maybe it's weekday. Maybe you're having a casual Tuesday and you need that Revitalite in your system. The best way to do it, drink half before you go to bed, half after, and you're going to, you're going to feel amazing, um, waking up the next morning. So that way you're not having that rough and rowdy morning after Uh revitalite black label made specifically with stoolies and the boys in mind for maximum recovery and the perfect complement for when life gets a little rough and rowdy. Don't pay for Saturday nights on Sunday morning. Revitalite black label pairs perfectly with nightcaps and midnight snacks. Boys, your nightstand will feel naked with without revitalite. So stock up. Look, here's the pro tip. I already said it, but here's the pro tip. So if you're listening, you know you're going to tailgate hard this weekend. Drink half at night before the night before the tailgate. And then the other half in the morning, right before the tailgate for optimal results. Pick up your Revitalite Black Label today in stores or online at Barstool Sports Store and tweet us at or tag at Drink Revitalite in your morning after stories. It was brutal, man, because, dude, we were... <laughs> I think the chop block call was kind of BS too on jerk. Yeah, exactly. That's the way to bring that one up. G I appreciate that. That was fucking when, uh, the way Jurgens can't climb to the second level. It's like, at what point is somebody, is he here? I'll go get it. If, if, if Jurgens, it's like, what, what's the rule on, on chopping somebody down? Because we had that illegal block, right? Was that the boys that calling down? me? Call him. Fuck. Here comes Taylor talking about fucking Michigan. Is he coming? Here we fucking go. There it is, boys. There it is. <laughs> I hope your trip was good. That shirt hey, looks nice on you. It's so, was somebody Six just here no. saying, hey, we're talking Six about it? No. By week, going in number eight in the country. Nebraska. And I mean, Will, I mean this with all due respect. I really do. Fuck Big Red. Where are my Michigan boys at? Hey, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Where are my Michigan boys at? They sold 200. I just want to have the 200 pieces. Of, are you a Michigan guy? Yeah. That's my Michigan boy out there right there. Go ahead and pass this one back to Block. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what, Will. Maybe mix them on the ad reads, boys. Go ahead and pass it. Alex, that whole stack was for you. That whole fucking stack was for you. Get that shit out of here. Yeah! Oh, oh! I'll pick that up later, I promise. I know what oh. you Huh? 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 Just start stopping my phone. Just fucking breaking things? Da, 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 da. Oh, dude, that was the end of the song. Sorry, I missed that. We'll play it again. Just found it. Hey. To the concrete heroes, hell, hell to Michigan. The fucking yes, dude. Fucking yes. Hey, and we're camera. back. <laughs> and let's adjust the camera because I kicked some things over. <laughs> what we do? We do a Chevy ad? We probably just did one Chevy ad. Maybe talked about how the weekend was average at best in the Lincoln, Nebraska. Why? Because that means it was a 10 in Lincoln. 
If you say, how was your trip in Nebraska? And you say, average at best, they know that was a fucking 10. Why? Because it's Lincoln fucking Nebraska. Whoa, 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 easy now. And I know that it was a great game and we had a good conversation about it. But you know what? Fucking go blue, buddy. The Wolverines. The Wolverines stroking themselves into a bye week, feeling great. I'm all in. What are you guys ranked right now? Eight in the country. Why'd you ask? Top 10. Yeah, I know. I know. What are you guys? We're the best three Besides, four team. We're the best three and four team in the country. Oh, that's is that what the right? Fuck we are. <laughs> that's, that's what point. the fuck we are. Without special teams, you guys would be the best team in the country. Yeah, and we we uh, it's hard when you're playing Michigan and the fucking referees. What do you mean? Are you kidding? Did you not catch what was that before two minute when they called it back, touchdown, called it back, touchdown, called it back, and then a DPI? Oh, you're talking about the reviews when yes. you guys obviously didn't and score? Then, and then obviously they were gonna do shit in the fans, which Nebraska has phenomenal fans. I think we saw it. I think I think it was amazing to see them get as loud as they were. But to see them fucking cheer and the refs go, we can't let these people down. This is literally all they have. That's what they said to themselves. This is all they have. You saw the reviews, bro. And that DPI call before halftime, yeah. that you guys, that ghost call on JoJo Doman, when your receiver just stopped right in front of him. Yeah. And the ball wasn't catchable. Well, guess what? Boom! You know? Hey, get you guys self something nice. Alex, boom, dude! You got the only non-football guy in here supporting you. <laughs> You're the only guy that doesn't even like, he doesn't even like football. Wait, 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 He's wait. He's cashing wait, a wait, check wait, with us, dude. Wait, wait, wait. You're paying these boys, ba we, our bet was based on shirts, not oh, the no, no, game. Oh, no, 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 no. That was just a, because I love you. That was oh, a, gotcha, gotcha. got some extra spending money in my pocket, because I fucking love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. I saw the boys. I looked at them. I said, man, these guys have been working their ass off and they've been supporting the boy. Tough, high times, low times, and everything in between. Here's some fucking spending cash, boys. Get yourself something nice. Hey, you the know? Smoothie King deal of the week. Hey, well, I was just talking about getting a little extra money. What? And, hey, and look at that. Hey, dude. Hey, we, we, Santa Luan comes in, dude. Segment, he always, Saint Luan, dude. He always fucking these, Saint uh, Luan. He always has these deals, so we're doing deal of the week. He says five dollars smoothie king on Friday. God bless. <laughs> hey, there you go. You, yeah, that's twenty smoothie. That's actually forty smoothie kings. You're welcome. You've been living. You've been living the dream this weekend. Hey, what we say on the last fives? Money changes you. <laughs> oh, oh, there's no question. Oh, there's no question. I just think it's. Be I, I, I was driving. I was gonna go get my IV. And I called Bobo and Bobo said, hey, Roger's going first. So you I, you have an hour. And I thought, what would I do with my hour? It's obvious. I'd go see the guys that have supported me and make whoa, fun of whoa, you whoa, for on, sucking, dude. Make fun of your team for sucking. Now, whoa, whoa, hang on. We don't suck, though. You're like, hey, I, you guys won. I, congratulations. Uh, congratulations. But let's give credit where credit's due. It's, it's Nebraska not a good football team. You're going to say you're the eighth team in the country. Eight team in the country. Yeah. If you want to say Nebraska's shitty and sucks, like yeah. then you guys aren't going to be there long. Like, Let's put a little respect on Nebraska's name. No, no, here's what here's you guys so have. We're losing with less than okay. 13 points total between Michigan State, Oklahoma, what was the and line? Michigan. What was the line? Three and a half. Oh, okay, so we covered that plenty. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, we didn't. We won by three. You guys won by three. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I was oh. thinking of numbers. yesterday's yeah, game numbers against the Jacks. <laughs> hey, I had to take some shots yeah, at the yeah, noggin yeah. yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Not only when you go into Lincoln, Nebraska, are you playing 11 guys in the field, you're also playing an outstanding fan base. All right? An outstanding fan base. So do I give the fan base credit where credit is due? Yes. What do you, got, what do you call them? The black shirts? Or is that the defense? That's the defense. The black okay. shirts. The, the black shirts played well, too. You guys played well. You guys did good. You know what I'm saying? Since it's 2021 and we're dishing out participation trophies everywhere, congratulations to you guys. And I'm very happy. I really, And I, you know what? They got some orange slices after the game, a Capri Sun, and they went home. You know what? And they probably fucking went, hey guys, it's okay. We tried our hardest, like the way you're talking right now. And that was an L, buddy. And you know what? Michigan's probably going to lose one this year, too. And I'll eat that when that happens. But right wow, now. Oh, that's crazy that you're saying they're probably going to lose one this year. Yeah, you know how hard it is to go undefeated? Yeah, but if I'm eight in the country and we're six and oh right now, you yeah. think I'm saying anything about the boys losing? Yeah, but you live I'm in a fantasy world, dude. You, li you live in candy cane land with gumdrops and, and rainbows filled, like sprinkles come out of them. Like you're just you're fucking a fugazi, dude. This failure doesn't enter the mind when we're undefeated. Is that okay? Yeah, but you don't know what that is like, so you have no room to talk. When have you ever been undefeated in anything? Haven't been undefeated. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, ever. I think so a freshman in high school. If I was, that's, you, you're you're finals. the kid. You're the kid that comes up to me and goes, eh, "If I was six seven, I'd be in the league." Like that's you, because you're not. You know what I'm saying? So you assume I'm in you the could league. be. What are you talking about? No, you're there's not. no question. I'm the guy that's like, if I'm six seven, first call off, yourself. First I don't. Rounder. This is not going to be a shit on Will Day. You're not in the league right now. Okay, 
right now. And I know that's going to change. Why? Because I love you. And I know you're, you're, hey, you're, you don't have to touch me. You're good enough. I understand. You're good enough. Let me tell you something. You're fucking good enough, dude. You're <laughs> Can I tell enough. you something? Let me, just you, <laughs> Will Compton, let me get the silica, is enough, okay? <laughs> you're fucking enough, dude. You all right? Yeah. Now, it doesn't change my love for you. And I, and I want to talk about this, this t shirt sales thing. Because you guys, we covered the spread in that one. In that aspect. <laughs> Hey, and I don't think it's Michigan's fault. Like we have the best fan base in the world. Here's the problem. Here's no, the no, issue. No, Here, your no, boy, you don't oh. think you guys have the best fan base in the world. We have the largest living alumni in the entire world. We're the winningest program in college football history. We have 115,000 people at every single game. I don't need to talk about the, like, I'm literally talking stats. I'm not talking about if buts and maybes. I'm talking about factual fucking evidence here, buddy. All right. I don't speak in ums, you know? I'm telling you, we got the best fan base in America. Now, you here's the problem. Now, here's the problem. Now, here's the problem. They really showed up, Now, here's up, the problem. They? Dave Portnoy ghosted me. Okay? I, I watched it happen. I it didn't. unreal to watch. I didn't. I put me and Will in a group chat with Dave because maybe I was a little nervous to text him one-on-one because I thought he for sure won't ghost me if you're in it. I texted him. I texted him again. I think I've texted Taylor him five. Se- him. I've, I, I single text texted. That's Spanish for five. Okay. Yeah. I texted that fucker five times and he did not respond. Now I get it. The man's busy. He's got his one bite pizza going everywhere. And if you guys do, it's a 10. It's unbelievable. It's at Walmart. It's fucking everywhere right now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's killing it. You guys should absolutely go eat that stuff. And when I go to, uh, I say, Dave, that's my ace. That's my ace in the fucking pocket right there. If Dave promotes it, we're going to win. Why? The following. I, when you're in the season and you have the ups and downs that are, you are normally going to happen in the season. I can't be on Twitter being like, hey, sorry about the L, but please buy these shirts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, tough loss for the boys, but please go ahead and buy but these $30 shirts. You're building, what's happening right now is you're making these excuses when you made the bet. And I literally No, go, the bet's still made. I literally said, hey, I'm just letting you know it's different, different. Can I, I tell you something, streets. Will? Can I tell you something? That's not the only stack, buddy. All right? I know the bet was made. Okay. And when the when the fucking but you're trying to be when, like, oh I was trying to pay the piper the season. I can't no I you know what because my job is to play football all right I love to do this every day with you but I can't all right I got it I'm I'm playing ball you're saying like I'm wanting I was wanting you to I didn't want you to lose the bet I just knew you were going to yeah because I knew my fan base regardless if I had anybody if I had any superhero with me like a Dave Portnoy I did come in late with Big Cat but even the day one sales I knew my hey, fan Dave base Dave Cat needs to buy 20 of them things by the way uh, yeah he does I was surprised you didn't hold him to that yet but I knew my fan base was gonna rock and buy these shirts more than your fan base was gonna rock and buy those shirts yeah cuz you live on social media and that's that's not why you've done it well you have a mannequin dressed up as Taylor Lewan you are you have like statues around Michigan you're a first rounder you're like oh Taylor Lewan went to Michigan will i didn't have none of that and all i got to say is hey boys can we go buy a shirt and the whole fan base ready to rock and die for the boys. Did you, okay? I was on the phone with Will for 30 minutes yesterday and he was just blowing himself on how he went to Nebraska and people were fucking loving him. That is such a lie. He, hey, he was he being goes, cheated goes, like a four-time hey, All-American goes, for triple-time first-round draft. That was out of your mouth. He was being cheated. That was out of your mouth. Here's the he deal. Goes, he goes, hey, how does it feel, dude? He goes, it looks like you were a, a four-time All-American, 10-year Hall he of goes, Famer, he goes, Bowler. He goes, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes, yeah, it was kind of like that. That's you fucking said. Are you, that that you fucking said, dude? That is so crazy that you're that rattled right now because your fan base didn't have your back the way my fan base has my back. Listen, it's our fan base number one. Okay, right? not they, when it's Michigan, Nebraska. That's fair, but there's a nucleus, right? Nucleus, nucleus. like nucleus. I think the wings are here. A nuclei. A nuclei. That's plural. That's two. I think it's nucleus is one. Yeah. Fucking, we're the yolk and the egg, dude. It's the biggest nucleus. Okay, that's that the bus is. Yeah. Okay. You have the bus and you fucking just vomiting on Twitter all the time. And I love it. Why? Because look how much you've done, Will. Fucking look at you. You look how much you've done. Did you just come here just to see me? No. I'll sign something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that helmet goes hard, by the way. Um, Where's Michigan? So anyway, Mi- <laughs> yeah, we got, we got some tough times in Michigan. Like, listen, I fucking love Michigan. I'm all in on I'm all in on Michigan. Michigan State is up next. Fuck Michigan State. Fuck green. Fuck white. Fuck East Lansing. 
love Jack Conklin, but fuck Jack Conklin, dude. Fuck Michigan State, and we're going to donkey them too. Where's that game at? I think it's, is it at Michigan or Michigan State? State. Fucking good. Go there. You know, the last time I played at Michigan State, you know how we did? Negative 49 rushing yards. That's how fucking good we did. Trash. Negative 49? Oh, we got donkeyed. And you know what they do? Fucking Mike Will Cross every single time. Can we block it? Nope. You know how guys in that offensive line got drafted? Three. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Huh? I thought hey, we had a bye hey, week. Somebody here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. Northwestern and then Michigan, Michigan State. State. Okay. We had Michigan State. Ryan Fitzpatrick's the head coach of, Mich- uh, of Northwestern. Big fan of him. Great guy. Great attitude. The facilities at Northwestern are unbelievable. But you guys are, you guys are, you guys, you guys aren't Michigan. I'm sorry. This is what um, it is. You guys aren't Michigan. Hey, you're not going to beat Michigan. Here, take, that's here, a, that's a rollover game. Right now. That's a pad the stats game. Go you know what I'm saying? Know that's Aiden Hutchinson getting multiple sacks game right there. Oh, Aiden Hutchinson. He's a beast. He's a no, stud. A- yeah, Aiden's a beast. I saw, you know, I love how I love how he went to the locker room after right after the game wanted to t- wanted to tweet about me. He tweeted about you? Yeah. Right after Aiden. Right after the game. He was in the locker room for three minutes. They're wondering how Will Cobb is doing. Yeah, that's what he said. Should we check in with him? Yeah, give him a ring. Oops. Oh, hey, that was an accident. I didn't mean to. That's kind of just the thing. That's going to be your ringtone when you call me now. God, you know what's you know what's better than being good when you play at Michigan? Not playing at Michigan anymore and then watching them be as good as they are now. Being so proud of that. Yeah. You know, because we were trash when I was there. Really I know. Won that game. Shout out Brendan Givens for the game winning kick. Let's call Aiden Hutchinson. Let's see what Aiden Hutchinson is doing. <laughs> hey, that shit was funny as hell. Man, it just feels fucking good. It's brutal right now. I'm not gonna lie. It hurts out there, doesn't it? I feel down bad. Hey, you got something to say to our boy? <laughs> he just goes, "Oh." You, you see, we actually just got out of our team meeting, giving out our players of the game. So you guys said players of the game being an unranked Nebraska team. You guys are feeling good like that. Don't let him phase you. Don't let him phase you. <laughs> Environment was A plus. Alright. That was uh was pretty damn cool, but damn, the fans wanted to, 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 to tear down those goalposts so bad. Just the fans are ready to storm. You guys are ready to storm the field. You guys are gonna storm the field over just a, a big ten win? Over yes, one hundred percent. Beating eight Michigan. Nine Michigan at the time. Oh, top ten. Hey, Michigan. who who were the players of the game? You're by the way, you're on blessing right now, so don't don't say anything you don't want to be heard. Um there are about twelve of them. But, um, oh my God! Lot. Twelve players. A lot of guys. Twenty twenty one. A lot of guys. Twenty twenty one. We're just handing out trophies. Just handing out trophies. Is that what it is? Yeah. Look, 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 Will. Um, I just I watched the pod a week ago. I heard you talking all all, all of that. Can, can I swear? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Talking all that shit, and I actually made that tweet out to you on Tuesday, right when I heard that. So, oh my God! He had a premeditated I, tweet. What's up with I'm Michigan guys going right to Twitter after games? <laughs> don't let him get you. Don't let him phase you. Don't let him phase you. That's just Will. He got, he, he got new him. teeth and he thinks he's got fucking confidence now. Don't let him fucking he got get these you. Teeth like three years ago. Chill. Hey, Take the L like a man. He's right. I, I, like I, so I did everything I could. I feel so bad for you because I know how bad you wanted to celebrate. That's all. Yeah. I was ready. I was running down there by the student section. I was like, "Hey, we're all we're all still in the field." Oh, oh, oh! The thirty-one-year-old man is trying to get the student 32. section. Thirty-two-year-old man is trying to get the student section to storm the field. Hey, great ball, great ball. We'll get you on the pod after the season. All right. Great work, dude. Make a tweet on Tuesday. He fucking premeditated your ass. Taylor just texted me. What'd she say? Oh, gosh, damn it, dude. Hey Jack, I think we were, we bet the spread. No, 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 no. We can go back to the tape. We said straight up. Right I think there. me and you bet the spread though. No, 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 no. I I got two hundred from Taylor, but I'm actually expecting eleven hundred from you. Oh, you you Will bet you bet went, you went yeah, as far yeah, yeah. to bet on Michigan. Oh, uh, me and Will, we will bet the entire bus. Take another one. Oh, Take another oh, one, Jack. Hey. I'll, I'll Take wait. another one. Call those fun coupons. <laughs> fun coupons. Call those real tickets. <laughs> Just seeing how married you are to him. I'm not. The boys can have that. Why? Because they support. 
you guys really can't have that. Actually, my wife would be pissed. I would go home and she'd be like, where'd the money go? And I'd be like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. Yeah, and then uh, he also bet that Tennessee, what was our bet? That Tennessee well, so would initially sell. I tweeted out if we did 25 shirts, which <laughs> in hindsight, yeah. Like, hey, you got to hear this story. You do your thing. Hang on, wait for Taylor. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm just texting Taylor. Hang on, I got to get my uh, wedgie up. <laughs> All right, boys. We interrupt this episode for an ad read for Roback.com. Shout out the boys at Roback, Roback Activewear to be specific. You all know Roback, best fit, best feel. It's football season, the best is season, which means it's hoodie season. Luckily for you guys, Roback just restocked their performance hoodies. And I'm not kidding when we say these boys are the absolute softest, most highest quality hoodies in the game. The material is out of this world soft and the stretch is unmatched. Nobody does hoodies like the boys at Roback. They also drop some new performance polos and trust us when we say the designs are fresh, perfect for the golf course or a night out with your girl they scream versatility we've worn these polls hundreds of hundreds of times and the collars look brand spick and new each every time each and every time the fabric is just so soft Roback's gear is popping up all over the NFL. From our little boy Quentin Nelson to the Bengals D and Sam Hubbard, Roback is quickly becoming the go-to activewear in the league. Will Compton was spotted wearing Roback. Um, they also have the biggest apparel sponsorships in college sports with Notre Dame's Kyle Hamilton and Georgia quarterback JT Daniels officially joining the Roback fam. It's fair to say Roback's gear is popping up all over the place, especially when Roback is partnered they didn't mention this in the ad read, but when Roback is partnered with Bustin' with the Boys, you know their shit is popping off. So if you play football, you're a football fan, or you're a Bustin' fan, you wear Roback. It's as simple as that. Use code Bustin, B-U-S-S-I-N, on Roback.com for a generous, generous 20% off of your first order. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com for 20% off all your polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and tees with code BUSSIN. Hop on the Roback bus now because it is taking off, so go check the boys out. Roback.com. Do it for the boys. Always and forever. Are they here? Yeah, we got them. All right, cool. Oh, man. Huh? Here, Let's hear, you it. hear this story. Let's hear the story. Huh? On why he won another thing. Huh? Let's so, hear the story. Huh? Last week on the pod, we I made a comment about how Tennessee fans wanted a boy shirt. So we took to Twitter. We stormed the gates. We had a ton of responses. People wanted it. We released it. I said if we sold 25 shirts in the first day. In the first day. Then, hey, in the first day. Then, then whatever. So 2019 comment? So, <laughs> so, so just started the bus comment? Will slanders me on Twitter and he's like, if we do 250 shirts in 24 hours, I'll give you $1,000. If you don't sell 250, I have to buy the remaining shirts up to it. What was it, Will, after 24 hours? Like 500 plus? No, it was like 40. Oh, Vols fans goes hard. Because you, now- you, you wanted Tennessee to beat Nebraska, and Nebraska did 580 in day one. Well, we Michigan also- did 100. Just, I, you know. I can't tweet like that, dude. I can't tweet <laughs> like that tried. during the season. What's crazy is we, we promoted. We promoted, and it's still, I think it was like 140. Yeah, it's tough. They'll get back on board. Listen, here, here's, wh- here's why, Michigan, it's okay that you didn't buy. I've said a lot of things throughout the years. That you're probably upset about. <laughs> and I want you to know. Sorry, go ahead. No, I want no you to know that it's not, it wasn't you, the fans. It wasn't the school. It was my situation at the end of my career that made me so upset with Michigan. That being said, I'm all fucking in. I'm fucking in. All right. And I hope this makes it through everywhere. I'm fucking in. I've, like, I've been making little cracks at Vrabel. This might be the year. Walk by him. Wow, stay. I am and you know what Rebel does? That. Doesn't say a fucking word about it. Actually ignores me every single time, which is really upsetting. But I, those, hey, those Vols shirts go hard. And the Tennessee Volunteers have a very soft spot in my heart, even though I've doubled down on heart a couple of times. Here's why. Is that right? Soft spot? They have a soft spot. You have a soft spot. I have a soft spot in my heart for them. For, for them. Yeah. That was right. Yeah, Alex. You know what? That's fucking, he's trying to derail me because he's on your team. <laughs> Michigan and Tennessee in the 90s were probably the most relevant football teams. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> and Nebraska was the, the most relevant team in the 90s. And you'll have your turn to talk. So okay. right now, 98. shut the fuck up, Will. While daddy's hey. speaking. Hey, do you want to go to your room? Hey, 40, Do you want to go to your fucking 40, room right now? 42 17 Orange Bowl versus Tennessee, Nebraska over Tennessee. The year we split the national title okay, with so you. So he is going to go. 
I'm just saying you're saying Tennessee was the most relevant team. They no, were. I'm saying Tennessee. And, okay, let, let's start again. Tennessee and Michigan were one of the most relevant, dominant okay. teams in the 90s. Okay, that leaves a little room for you to slip in your your corn eating friends. So, <laughs> that, so since pissed. then, Michigan's, Michigan's had a tough time, and and the Tennessee Volunteers have had a tough time. Now, Tennessee, you're gonna get uh, what's Tennessee's record right now? They're they're doing well, aren't they? Yeah, we had a huge win against uh, oh, JP's alma mater. Oh, South JP, Carolina. where'd you go? South Carolina. Give me hundred back. Uh, it was twenty eight zero in the first quarter. <laughs> Just fucking trade. Give give hundred to Jack now. <laughs> we, we have a huge game this weekend against Ole Miss, though. Uh, big big weekend. Yeah, Barstool's doing their college game day there as well. So any stoolies out in Knoxville? The show special up for teams them. coach hit me up and wants us to get the bus out there. Really outstanding. Yeah. So here, so here's the deal. So so Tennessee, I'm with you. I support you too. And honestly, I support Nebraska. I think it's great now that it's moved on. Like we've kind of just kind of speed bumped over Nebraska, and we've moved, like we've gone past that. I think it's, I'm back on Nebraska too. I, I'm a big fan of the school. I'm a big fan of the people that come out of there. Love Dobson, Levante David, love Will Compton. Uh, Bo Pelini, I was a huge fan of him, you know? So I'm fucking, I'm a Nebraska guy too. It's just nice to know what should be and is, is Michigan on top. You know what I'm saying? And you guys will get there. Keep your head up. Keep I was just thinking we up. can't let this last week like divide us like this. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I think as soon as this pod's over, we move on. We're going to be back. And also, I was pretty fired what up. The, what's with Nebraska always having a quarterback with the last name Martinez? I don't know, but he's about to shatter like every record by the time he's, he's done. done. Yeah, he's good. How about that forward progress when he got the ball stripped out of him and then the game? Yeah, we were talking about that. Uh, tough for you to see? Yeah, because I was just like looking back at it. It was like a full two seconds on the game clock. He well, was stagnant. Then got stripped. You know. It just sucked because... You, you guys got a lot of calls in that game too, so it's kind of weird that you said that. No, we, were we fucking reps. didn't. I mean, we got we got it, calls overturned. We got calls overturned. We got calls overturned because of bad calls made. But we can't review penalties that they. All those calls were close, did you which see, means they should have stood. Did you see the delay of game that we had? No. Where the kid just tries to get his, he tries to get my man's attention because it's obviously so fucking loud. He tries to get his attention and say, "Hey, you're lined up over here." The ref is literally looking. This is at Michigan. Him. This is Nebraska on okay. defense. On defense. And uh, ref throws a flag, calls delay a game because clapping is the cadence of Michigan. Well, you guys can't try to cheat then, huh? All I was that saying, sure does go hard. we can't let the last week divide us. I'm going to stay there. Yeah. Even though we're talking about phone calls and what we say in phone calls now. I, listen, every time I tweet you, I'm assuming that it's going to get out in public with you. Every time you tweet me. Tweet, text you. Sorry. Oh, come on now. When, when have I done that to you? You've done that a lot. When? I'm pretty sure when I tore my ACL, you announced that I was getting surgery before I, I announced that I was getting surgery. I might have just said that on Twitter. I didn't screenshot okay. your text. Okay. What is, what, is everything okay, dude? <laughs> I hit a lot in the head yesterday, yeah. okay? I'm a little fuzzy. I feel like a lot's living in there. Hey, how was the pod? How was, uh, did you guys do a full pod with AD and the head coach? Or was it just like a little deal? Um, We did, how long was it again? 35 minutes? Yeah, 35 minutes. How was that? Solid? Yeah, it was solid. I was a little nervous. You're sitting there with an AD and the head coach, and they play the next day. Yeah. So I'm like, and then people are calling me beforehand, like, hey, what questions are you going to ask? Like, you're feeling like this weird pressure to not Yeah, like, like you're all of a sudden a, a real journalist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you got to ask real questions. Yeah, like I'm Stephen A. Smith. Who does, uh, who does uh, Nebraska play next? Minnesota. Oh, that's a dub. The I Golden so, Gophers? Where do you guys play? At Minnesota? We're at Nebraska. Uh, I don't know. He's jumping everywhere. We are... At Minnesota. At Minnesota. Minnesota's got a cool And then we got cool Purdue. Stadium. I almost went to Minnesota. Really? Did you know that? Why Minnesota over the teams that are recruiting you? Was my, da my, dad, my dad went to Minnesota, and so they were putting a pretty uh, big press on me. And it was a cool, like, the, the campus is cool. I like the uniforms. I like the purple and gold. I think that's pretty cool. I was always, or maroon and gold. I'm a fan of their, their colors, Minnesota's colors. Really? Yeah. Um, what do they say? Scola? What do they... That's what that's what the Vikings, the Vikings say. Vikings. What do they what do, what does Minnesota say though? They have they have something like that too. Uh, go Gophers. No, they have something also that's like Sku yeah, Skuima. Skiuma. Skyuma. Yeah. So they do have a thing. So maybe I'm not an idiot. Anyway, I almost went there. My dad walked on there and they were like putting the big press on me. And I was actually thinking about going there, but then I realized like I don't want to lose a bunch of games. I can't be you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not trying to go to Minnesota. I no want to offense. say in the last five years, like, though, they've been all right. I think Minnesota has, but yeah, when we were playing like Minnesota was garbage, garbage hockey school for real. More than anything, Minnesota Duluth is a hockey school. They rip. 
Man, but, I thought we were going to beat you guys, dude. Uh, you know what? When I started he to go... Said hockey school, and I was thinking of my tweet where I was like, you guys are a basketball school. Yeah, I saw that tweet. <laughs> when you when we were going back and forth, I was like... it was. I know I said this on the phone. It was a good fucking game. Dude, it was awesome. It was a good game, and I'm sure it was hyped to be there. Maybe Michigan, we can mend these bridges. Maybe we can go... You guys can go next year to Michigan. Oh, you got to retire after this year. <laughs> Not we got to tour. We got to tour the country next year. <laughs> yeah, bro. sounds like it's getting to that point, huh? Dude, it was. I will say, I, I mean, obviously, like, take this with a grain of salt, people listening. I'm, I'm, I'm 100 percent on football, so let's chill the fuck out. <laughs> but like, I do. Yeah. So chill the fuck out. The I feel like people are like, you gotta stop. You gotta stop doing podcasts and focus on football. It's like, dude, this is an hour, and the rest of my life is you focused go on get football. An IV. You had to wait for your IV. Yeah, you just go fuck around with Will. But uh, I did get some FOMO in Nebraska when you guys were in Nebraska. I had some FOMO about that. For real? Yeah, I really did. It seemed like a really cool experience. Dude, it, it, it was cool. And they treated the boys awesome, too. They treated awesome. JP and Garrett like we were back in the fucking locker room. and equipment. Like these dudes were doing whatever they wanted. Not like they were purposely doing it, but they were just treating them well. That's rad. I was in the middle of the pregame. Like JP. Up, and I'm like in the middle of the hunt. Are you filming <laughs> it? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's he goes, you think I can film? And I go, yeah, go ahead. He's like in there and the coach's like, get closer. And JP's like in the mix with all the boys. Man. Oh, that's fucking hype, dude. That's awesome. JP did the tunnel walk. Yeah, I was dapping fans up. And I was no down. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so rad. It was the little kids and stuff. I was like, hey, they were like, who is this guy? They're like, oh, it must be the uh, kicking recruit. How nice are Nebraska fans, by the way? So nice. So incredibly nice. The the coolest thing with the Nebraska fans, there was like this 80-year-old grandma front row. Stand up, get up. Screaming at everyone. Oh shit. 80 years old. Get on her, dude. Good fucking on her. That's awesome. How did you okay? Now, based on this question, there might be more exchanges of currency for you, you two. Well, you you guys didn't go. What? Did you guys go? Go where? To Nebraska. I was there. Garrett and JP. Would you what were you wearing on game day? Uh, all black. Do, was it anything Nebraska? Um, it said the boys on it. Was it that shirt? Maybe. <laughs> Handed to Jack. Already spent it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already, already, already spent it. Already spent it. <laughs> no, everyone was That's asking high, where you dude. were, though. Everyone was People asking. People asked where I was? Yeah, we were like, he's got a job. <laughs> he's got a, yeah. a, I'm in Jacksonville. Dude, it's funny. You, did you say, did we say this in the pod or did you say this in the pod that they, Nebraska actually asked if I could come on Saturday? Someone goes, yeah, this might be a weird ask, but is there any chance like Taylor can come too? And I was like, no, it's Saturday. He's going to be in Jacksonville. <laughs> flying, yeah. flying to Jacksonville, take a quick P-Jet over to Lincoln, <laughs> yeah. like get hype with the boys and cruise back over to Jacksonville. Golly. Play hey, Brave, you mind if I go to our, the Nebraska tailgate and I'll just fly to Jacksonville right after? That's so funny. Hey, dog, we were having so much fun there. We were like walking to uh, where we were walking from, just parking. We were parking. We were going to go in and uh, I forget what we were doing, but we go in and we're like, Leo, let's get a game day. Let's get game day. We were going to get a pump in. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got to work out in. Get on, get on you. And uh, we were going in. We were walking by the statue and I was like, yeah, let's get some game day photos. Like we're walking in all dressed up. That's we were just having the most fun, dude. Just it was, it was a blast. Yeah, it was. That picture of you laying in front of the cheerleaders. So. Dude, they come they're up. Like, who's this old guy? Yeah. <laughs> hey, they, they were came, loving Will. Were they? Yeah. They were, Dang. They came, they came and they're like, will you take a photo? And I was like, yeah, sure. It was a good time. You were a legit celebrity, like an A-list celebrity that this past weekend. It felt like it. I had like, you're thinking back on all the things you did for your, for Nebraska and you're like, what, what the fuck have I done to... Be out here waving the bus with the bus. Uh, yeah, it's not Sue. It's not David. Right. It's fucking right, right, right. But the thing is, like, Eric Crouch got inducted into the Hall of Fame for Nebraska earlier that night. And yeah. I, I want to say the crowd was just going nuts and we're just waving the bus with the boys flag. <laughs> how, how, but how's Pumping that make, up the student section? How hype, like, that's got to be an amazing feeling for you. Oh, dude, it was incredible. Yeah. Like, did, like, how, like, talk to me about it. Fucking give me some information. Yeah. Go into detail. Like, the dude, like, Undrafted. You want me to talk about myself? I want you to talk about yourself. But this is me opening the door saying, talk about yourself. Like, undrafted. You already shit on me for the phone call we had. Yeah, but we're moving. Like we said, we're not going to let it divide us. I thought you fucking said. We're moving on now. Like, what do you mean? Like, the only way we can move on is if we both move on. Yeah, I'm like, you mother. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fucking shit on you while you're talking. Legit, like, um, undrafted cat. Go play. Obviously, you've had a good career, but at the same time, like, it's not like you were an all American in there and stuff like that. Like 100%. And now you go back and it's, you're being treated like a King. How does that make you feel? It's just nuts that 
they're loyal to like their alumni like that. Like I know we do busting with the boys and we do all the dumb shit, but knowing that uh, they have a lot of alumni that watch as closely as we do every year and like support them, like they do everything. Like this staff, not the one before that with the Riley staff, but this new staff opens the doors for like all the alumni, for like all the players who play in the league. Um, because when we go there, they're always talking about, hey, spring game, would you guys want to come? Like they always have a dinner for the alumni, the players that are playing. Yeah, they're like, loving you guys. They do all of this stuff for the guys who played before them. And I just think they do it right. And for them to like accommodate and put the bus in the Boneyard tailgate, the Boneyard is like the student section, uh -huh. right? In the main tailgate area, right where they, right where the buses pull up, bro. Oh, so they all the buses saw it. pull up where the players drop off. Scott Frost and all them start walking right in that corner, right where it starts. The bus is sitting there. Hype content, dude. It was, it's just unreal, and they took care of it. It's just cool to know, like the few people I still know from when I played there, because it's not a lot of the same staff. Right, there's a lot of turnover. But the few that are still there, like just I don't know. It's just cool going back, knowing that I guess you have. I guess the freedom to walk around. I, everybody's just way too good to us, bro. Dude, a dude was talking about how we just like busting with the boys. It just changed, it like changes his life. Yeah. Really? And it's just because we goof oh, yeah. around so much and we're like making jokes and we just have the most fun all the time. It's just, it's weird hearing those comments because you go from like joking with JP and them to where you're like, okay, like I need to be serious. I'm taking this compliment because people really do like fuck with us heavy. That's crazy. It's just nuts, man. Well, let's say the bar's been set in Michigan. I think Michigan would be the same way, bro. Like, <laughs> I hope so. Not the flex is going to sound like a flex, but like you felt Michigan players and Michigan people looking at it. Like, we're still like about it. The boys. Yeah, they were still about it. Yeah. Like you heard a couple say, oh, the boy. And it's just, it's just nuts, man. Like pregame warm-ups, dudes are saying the boy. Yeah. Hey, Jacksonville was that way too. It was weird. There was Jacksonville fans like yelling the boy. There was busting with the boys' flags out there. It was fucking crazy. When the... the uh, we were driving down in a in a truck. I won't say what kind of truck, but we're cruising, and a Michigan fan was like, "Hey, Will, that's not a Chevy." Yeah, like we pulled up next to him, and I go, "I go, go big red, not today." And they kind of looked, and we had to turn around. And when we came back around, he goes, "That's not a Chevy." Oh, they were killing you. Yes, bro. Well, was it a rental? Yeah, that's why. Rental. Like, obviously, the rental we didn't companies. Get to rental it. companies are always going to do the cheaper vehicles. They're never going to give you the nice quality vehicles like the Chevrolet. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, I'm sorry you had to go through that this weekend. It sounds like that was kind of a bad deal. It, it sucked. That it had we to just be said, thanks was. for watching. Yeah. <laughs> and drove by. I mean, I'm, hey, I'm surprised you. you guys didn't break down on the way to the, wherever you guys were going. Because that Chevy. I know. It's so Unless durable it's and reliable. Silverado. When I'm not in a Chevrolet, I, I'm, I'm like, I hope I get to make it to where I'm going. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Fortunately, anyway. you have one. And you never Thank have to goodness. worry about it. I never have to worry about it. Never, ever. I had that, that damn thing on E for a day. And that thing was just like, we're still going to make it, buddy. Yeah. Like, I, You're the it, most dependable was selling its soul there. just to get me to the home. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I passed like two gas stations on the way. I was like, let's see how this goes. Yeah. Still made it home. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Chevy Silverado. I hear you, bro. It's the greatest thing ever. We interrupt this uh, programming to shout out Sling TV. Um, go to slingtv.com slash barstools to sign up now and get your first month starting at 10 dollars if you love watching live sports which i know you do but you're tired of the high prices it's time to take control of your life and your tv experience and it's time for you to go get sling sling is a place where your favorite sports channels like espn fs1 tnt and more are all together for less and it is the cheapest way I repeat, because we're all about cheap, boys. It's the cheapest way to get the best NFL viewing experience on TV, NFL Red Zone. With the Sling Blue Plus Sports Extra Package, you get Red Zone, NFL Network, and more for only $21 your first month. That's less than $1 a day. Plus, watch past episodes of Bustin' with the Boys, current episodes of Bustin' with the Boys, The Yak, um stool streams and other exclusive busting with the boys content and barstool content for free on the barstool sports channel on sling. Sounds like they should have a busting with the boys channel. Sling is easy to set up, easy to use, and there's no contracts starting at just $35 a month. Sign up now and get your first month for just $10. Whatever you're into sling is where you can find live sports. You love all in one place. Go to sling.com slash barstool to sign up now and get your first month starting at just $10. That's a body bag ad read. Back to this episode. For the love of God, subscribe and leave a comment. Um, 
Well, I kind of did what I came here to do. <laughs> you did, so. yeah. It was. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was rattled. I was like, motherfucker. When you knew it was me? Hey, because I, hey, hey, I was in a good rant talking about why we're 7 0. <laughs> Were you? That's yeah. sick. You know what else is sick? I'm so glad we're back, dude. I, it just feels so good to know that you left somewhere not in the best conditions and now someone has gone to take care of it. You know what I'm saying? Taylor's like, yeah, forget that bus story. I would have left my ass too. We're back, baby Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I love my ass for sure, dude. Fuck me. Hey, one day though, one day we'll get to. Yeah, that'd be that's gonna be sick someday. That'll be fun. This thing, I, 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 when I think about this bus and like how much it's accomplished, it's fucking mind blowing. <laughs> it really is. It's wild how much people support the boys. I wake up Saturday to that text from the from Coach Eckler, the one who got the tattoo that Bo was talking about when he was on the bus. Yeah. Because he's at Tennessee now. And I wake up to a text from him Saturday morning before his game. And he's like, hey, you need to get that bus in Knoxville next weekend. We could probably hook it up. I don't know why you wouldn't go. It's going to be in Knoxville? The game's in Knoxville? It's a, or it's where Ole The game's is. in Knoxville. So is the Barstool show. So you Oh, that's know. a win-win. You got to go. Yeah. That's high. It's just a lot of work. It's something that kind of just... We're making the shirts and we're doing all this stuff for the fan bases, right? Like the fan bases that we've played for and stuff. And now all these other people are like demanding that they get shirts made. It's kind of just like a, a concept that's happened last minute. Mm -hmm. It's not like we've planned on, you know, transporting the bus everywhere. Like we're transporting the bus and we're scared shitless because we're like, fortunately, we found some Nebraska bars that let us use neon signs when we were there because we don't want to travel with those because we yeah, don't, don't want to travel with those. Yeah, 100%. And then we're like, we got to break it down. Like you can't have all the spooky set up like these dudes. Uh, all the boys, I don't know who I'll put it back together, but everybody puts all the stuff back together for this episode on Monday. The bus just got back late last night. Yeah, you guys did a phenomenal job. This looks amazing. Very spooky in here. You got any spooks? How's Spooktober been going? Spooktober's been amazing. Uh, ah! No, it's been good. I, I definitely, I missed a, um, I because of the injury, which I will not talk about, the thing that happened to me at the Jets game, um, I didn't go to a haunted house. I didn't want to be moving around. Which is a bummer because you only get so many a year. We haven't been able to embrace it like it's been. Us, it's been a too. tough embrace. It's been a tough embrace this year. Um. Oh, fun little note, boys. I've officially made up more games than I did last year in the. Uh, really? Yeah, five games. I heard in the fifth game. Let's fucking go. Yeah, dude. I didn't think about that until after the game. I was like, oh, dope, 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 dope. Um, but yeah, dude, we're just watching a spook. I got my my so my daughter wins. She's four now. Put on uh hocus pocus for her. She loved it. Yeah, she was she was in and out. You know what I'm saying? She was. Cute. You're like doing the thing. Hey, hey, I'm like, hey, hey but the watch the scene. But watch the scene. You're not gonna get it. Yeah. You're not gonna get it if you don't know why the cat's talking. You yeah. know, yeah. or whatever. Um, so that, that's been a cool experience. Taylor and uh, her mom just absolutely destroyed the decorations at the house. Have you been to the house? Yeah, since? I was there the other day. Oh, that's right on Thursday. Are you coming over again for a lunch dinner? Yeah, we're doing it again at the house again. Uh, you gotta stop. You gotta stop coming at me like I'm, I'm that, like I'm fucked up. <laughs> you're saying some wild shit. I know, but you, you're making it seem like I'm fucking wrong in the head right now, and I don't like it. It makes but me you insecure. Make me feel wrong, you're making me feel insecure. <laughs> making me feel like I got something going on up here. I was literally over there four days ago. Dude, like, hey, they, oh, you know how it is, like I'm over there. You know mascot, how you know how it is during the season. Like you kind of just after four or five games, you kind of just running and. It's all one. day. It's all yeah. It's all one day. All one day. Like Wednesday's the same as Friday to me. Holidays go by. It's crazy. And that's why it's like, Spooktober, you really need to embrace it because it's like, it goes by so fast, middle of the season. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then all of a sudden, it's Thanksgiving. Then all of a sudden, Friday, it's Christmas. Though? This Friday, Halloween Kills comes out and the boys hooked it up, yeah? Yes, bro. Oh, sweet. I got to text all the boys that because I was telling some of them, I was telling KB about it and he's like, oh yeah, we're all in on that. So they, they seem like, everyone seems like they're about to go to that I'm thing. I'm starting to get nervous that it was, I should have done a bigger one. Did you not do the bigger one? It was like, well, there was a 50 some one. I did the 70, like 78. 78. I think there's like a hundred and something one. And then, yeah, I might have to do a hundred piece. <laughs> it's might be a little late for that though. Yeah. Maybe I just paid for it. They've been on my ass like for a month. and I finally just got to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Halloween I, kills comes out Friday though. Yeah. And so the boys are hyped to do that, which I'm hype about, but I want to go to a haunted house. Similar. I've only been to one this whole, uh, this whole, uh, spooktober. Have you been to one yet? You haven't done nothing. You haven't, you haven't really, you've had a, you'd have a tough time embracing the spook. Hey, we're embracing the spook right now. I don't know why we got to bring that up. We're not divided. We had a work, we had a work, we had a work weekend. I couldn't go last week. I had a work weekend. You didn't and try to week, catch one in Nebraska? The, the weekend before was Charles' surgery, remember? Because yeah, I was going yeah, yeah, yeah. to go with you. I know. I was like, we'll see how Charles feeling. Hey, pregnancy, yeah, dude. <laughs> Pregnancy's a bit of a I deal, know, huh? bro, yeah. How's she doing? She's doing good now. Yeah. She, was, she was in it, though, for, for a few weeks. I know, that poor girl. I know. She was grinding, but 
No, it's been solid. But, yeah, it's been tough getting to the haunted house on the weekends because of the Nebraska this past weekend and then her thing the weekend before. But as far as what we're watching, Midnight Mass, I know I was telling you about that last yeah, you're night. Yeah, you Midnight Mass on, on Netflix. That is a good flick. Uh, dude, something a little that's slow also- to start. Go ahead. A little slow to start, but very well written. There's a lot of depth and context with uh, those writers because they did The Haunting on Hill House and Haunting of Bly Manor, which I've told you the last few years to watch. Yeah. But it's the same writers and producers. So it's an awesome. Midnight Mass is a great flick. I love that. One show that's been pretty rad, it's not like a traditional spook, but it's definitely got some spooky vibes, is that Squid Games. Everyone talks Everyone's about Everyone's talking that. about it, dude. That, game, that thing is wild. I love it. Everyone says like from the jump, from the first episode, they're like, you're, you're locked oh, in. Oh, you're hooked, dude. You want to watch the whole thing. It's crazy. That fires me up. That show's crazy. I, Looking at the Spooktober calendar, that uh, that trailer for the movie Old. Have you guys seen that trailer? Yeah. It looks a little intense. It could be cheesy as hell or it could be solid. I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. From who? Kyle, I think yeah. our roommate went to go see it and he he was all about it's it. It's a fire little sure. deal. Is that in theaters or? Because I saw that on Apple TV. Yeah, it's crazy how that thing is all changing. The the streaming thing, like theaters, are becoming a thing of the past, which is kind of a bummer. My my rookie year in the league, dude, Not I loved. Friday. I loved like Thursdays after practice by myself. Nice little popcorn. Used to chew back then. Put in a fat lip and just watch a watch a movie. Fucking love watching movies. Chewing popcorn. I was all about Not the, the same ices, time. dude. Getting a Slurpee, getting a little icy. I bet, dude. I bet. Raising heads. I fucking bet you were. Slurp it up a little bit. Whoa, dude, chill. <laughs> we're talking about ices, dude. Yeah. He no I, pause. All I know is you're talking about slurping it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, fucking... Um, Go to Halloween Kills Friday, though. If you want to do what the boys are doing, we're getting... Yeah. We're, we're doing that. Uh, 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 bleep, bleep, that. It, bleep, bleep, bleep. Oh, we can't say that? Well, we just don't want people How many people up. do you want to show up? I want people showing up, baby. But we show need up. the team. We need the boys and their plus everybody that's going to show up to actually... For real, though, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, we can't we'll have, have a nice, uh, I think, a poster to take a little photo with. Oh, that'd be nice. Up, it's gonna be a nice deal. I can't wait. I know. I'm I love scared. team things. I love doing things with the boys. You know what I'm saying? We got a little set up, a uh, big pumpkin patch with the team on the 19th. Really? On Tuesday? Yeah. I'll be there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of guys bringing their kids and stuff like that. Oh, it was cool, man. Dude. God, I'm tired of shit. It's crazy how much energy you have to take during the season. It's wild. Yeah. Got me all insecure yeah, about wanna... my brain now, dude. You make me think well, I got that. You're just throwing weird random stuff. What am I out saying, there, bro? You you said first you said I posted a text from you last year when all I did was say thoughts and prayers. Text and tweets. Hey, hey, text and tweets. Hey, two I, I think it was two like, uh, and we can find it to put on YouTube. But it was like a thought and prayer thing of like hope and Taylor's surgery goes well. Like you had already it had already been known that you. We did a podcast on it. It was a statement more than anything. Yeah, and I was just like sorry for thinking thinking about you. Yeah, when yeah, the letter yeah. by know that I was thinking about you too for some retweets. <laughs> fucking, yeah, yeah, but listen, you making it sound like I'm fucking gone here. <laughs> no, I'm not, I can't help that you say something and my brain has to process for a second and within that second it lasts really long in your yeah, head to where you're like, shit. hey, I got, you know, I was a little banged up. <laughs> you're like, have you been in my house recently? Like, I was just over there. Dude, you, you don't think about that I and mean, you know what it's like, dude. Know, you bro. know what it's like. Is it hard being out of it for as long as you have? Like, I know it hasn't, it hasn't been a super long time but like kind of remembering what it's like in the middle of the season? Uh, a little bit, but like, not to like bring up stuff, but when you guys lose games, you kind of just, and the the week goes on, you remember which specific days, like how they kind of go and flow. Yeah. Like when we lost, well, when Nebraska lost, like I'm sitting there around all the dudes in the locker room and you're just kind of feeling like you just, you have like nostalgia of that stuff. Yeah. You know how like they're feeling and you know there's not really much to say. I'm more aware of like the spot that I'm in now like as much as I would want to say something, you just know that you know how they're taking it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's like if you're down bad and, and somebody, some alumni or somebody that's out of the game comes up to you and says something, you're just going to like nod and appreciate it, but it's not really going to... Yeah, but you're at the same time that you're not in this. Correct, right correct. Now. So it's more of like if they say something to you, you say something. I remember like when I was, in co- when I was playing college football, watching... Guys in the NFL being like, man, they got it all fucking figured out, don't they? Right? They got that shit all figured out. And now I look at kids in uh, college, I'm like, they have no idea how fun that no is. No clue. They have no clue. Even me now, like, knowing that I've been off and on with, like, when I get signed late and stuff like that, like, being out of it throughout the season when I before I went to the Raiders and this year, you kind of think of what the guys are going through when, when you guys lose games and how, like, damn, I know how their brain is because I know how, like, 
free mine is a little bit like when you're not losing and not having to go in the next day to watch film and get coached and like live in the bubble yeah because i remember when you guys started off that two and four year 19 four yeah in 19 and i was sitting there like and it was our first year of the pod too and i was just stressed as much as you guys because it was my first year not playing and you guys were losing i'm like damn i gotta post about this busting with the boys it was so fresh and new but when i went to oakland and we win a couple games you just realize like you don't even care what's going on back in nashville because you're just in such a like everyone's in like their own bubble like in the football yeah yeah, like you know what I mean? no one's thinking about like Kansas City losing the Bills yesterday, right? Like, no, like except for Kansas City fans, exactly. You know, we're all kind of just doing our thing, and that's the most fresh thing in my mind because that game was on last night, right? But like, and you know, the outside fan base, your bubble, it's not not a lot, right? No one really cares that. And much. you know, the fan base that's shitting on the players of like Kansas City and like their defensive guys and stuff, yeah. You're kind of just watching the game, and the way I'm sitting and watching it, I'm just like, oh damn, that was a good play by them, or oh man, he should have probably made that play, but yeah. you're not like, you're not like one of the trash guy. guy, but knowing like if they were on my team and my fan base, like if you're a fan, like how everyone just lives with anxiety and just emotional about it. Wouldn't it be crazy if like fans looked at it that way? Like not as if they're just like, watching what? the game. Like, Oh damn, that's a big play. Yeah. Yeah. They're just watching the game. There's some guys wide open and they're like the nearest guy to that body. They're going to yell at. Oh yeah. Yeah. 49, oh, you piece fault. of shit. Yeah. They're like, like just trashing. Oh, him. that's crazy, dude. But that's wild. Dude. I, uh, the Jacksonville game yesterday, we were like, it was like the third quarter or something like that. And these fans, Jacksonville fans are like 77 for whatever reason I looked and they're like, you're fucking trash. You're fucking trash. And there's a trash can right next to me. I'm like, I'm like pointing to me in the trash. Like, I'm trash. And like, yeah, you're fucking trash. I was like, I'm fucking trash. I'm fucking trash. Yo, and back at the van. Yeah, I, yeah, I was like, I'm trash. And they're like, yeah, you are fucking trash. And then we're kind of both getting hype about me being trash. You it go was, over a high five them. No, they're like, and at the end of it, I think we left friends. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're fucking, I'm like, yeah, I'm trash. I'm like, we're the same. And I'm like screaming at the trash can. Yeah. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You excited of this, man? Frank, our You're strength. Cooler than I thought. <laughs> Frank, our strength coach. He's like, isn't it so weird how people would be like, on a Sunday, like, be like, hey, Lawan, you fucking suck, and then they go to work on Monday, and be like, told Lawan he sucked. Like, right? What are you? What hey, do you, you get saw, out of it? You saw my tweet. You see my tweet. You Got see a couple retweets. Gave him that fucking business. Got six likes on this one. That's crazy. I I love I love insane. <laughs> I love educated fans. What do you say? He goes, don't talk about my numbers. He was like, you get six. <laughs> Hey, chill, 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 chill. Will is running that Twitter shit, though, dude. He is fucking on that shit. The boy is repping it. And it used to I'm be done, annoying I'm to me. I'm doing what I can out there, bro. It used to be annoying as fuck. Like, why is this man always tweeting? And now it's like, holy shit, this dude gets like, you have a little fucking following. <laughs> Bakhtiari hit me up the other day. What did he say? He said, hey, bro, I love following your Twitter feed. <laughs> did he really? He goes, hey, fire, Bakhtiari's he, all time. He goes, it fires me up watching you grow in this in this field. I love it, dude. It's amazing too, because like I think that's a perfect example of when people go to start a business or, or start their own thing. Like, there's always gonna be people that are like, "What the fuck's this guy doing?" Like, oh, he's For trying. Sure. He's trying so hard. Like, why is he trying so hard? He's not getting anywhere. And then like it grows. Everyone's like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Dog, oh, I know. Isn't that crazy? Because you, you know too, when we're first starting, like we're talking every day about like, is this cool or not? And like, there's every part pod, me, every no, pod, no, is no like one that. when we're starting it up and I'm tweeting and doing stuff. I'm just like, part of you feels like you're a tryhard sometimes because you know people might be thinking that way. Hundred percent. But now it's like. I don't know. It's just different. It's just, it's fun now. No, your shit's hilarious on Twitter. The thing I think is so funny clip too that. is clip that. Um, the thing I think is funny too is like whenever like we lose or you always like between the Raiders, Washington <laughs> football team and us, like you always find a way to get that dub that week. Dude. Dog, this that past shit weekend is was so all, fucking funny. This past weekend was only you guys, bro. Yeah. Thank God. Washington lost Raiders lost to the bears. I don't know what fucking happened. Um, and yeah, Nebraska obviously lost. Thank God for the boys. Oh, hey, the main boys. The main boys. Oh, the main rolling. boys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, were your main chick? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Them side pieces didn't do it for you this week, huh? Uh, Lee, yeah. That shit's funny. Do fans get mad at that? Are you fucking... Uh, really? So, some, so, I mean, uh, you might lose some, but everyone knows that we're just like fucking around. Like, damn, it's like that? The thing that's funny about your Twitter is like your Twitter's always been funny. Because like, I remember... Uh, Thanks, man. Hey, when you were in the uh, when you're in the when you're in the hot tub and fucking Malcolm Butler thought you were the kicker, and I saw and <laughs> I saw that tweet. We Dalen. just we just like just met or like right before we met. We just met, and I thought that shit was so funny. And I remember people being like, "Hey, if you want to follow follow a funny like a Twitter profile, Will's the profile." And I just remember like 
thinking that shit was funny and now it's like on steroids because you have like all these different outlets now. So the shit's kind of going up. Just fly, just hey, you see how we mended me with You see comments? how we mended it? You see how I came in? I know. I, I felt it. This is how I used to date in college, dude. <laughs> I used to break the shit out of them and then be like, hey, but you're beautiful. Yeah. And you're smart and you're funny. Yeah, like I remember the first time. Ter- I was a terrible boyfriend in college. I was a terrible boyfriend in college. Yeah, anyway. All right. Yeah, this has been good. We got a uh, we got a baby appointment here in 35 minutes. Sweet. I got an IV in 20 minutes ago. Hey, guys. It's your boy, Will, here. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this episode because I know I did. We had a great time talking. Um, can't even remember all the stuff we said. But if you could, please subscribe. Please leave comments. Please share this episode. And also, all of our merch is out. Spooktober merch, the boys merch. Go shop for your team. Go shop for the boys and go shop for you. Um, Holiday season's coming up, so maybe you start thinking about that. But thank you for listening to this episode. Rate, review, do all the fun stuff. The boys love you. JP loves you. We love and appreciate you. The biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Keep being a fucking wolf.